All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, for all my players, that was their first time watching the little intro there. So <laughs> you are getting some genuine live reactions. That was so, uh, so <laughs> We are here tonight to play some Werewolf the Apocalypse, uh, specifically set in 1969, uh, trying to basically prevent Pentex from uh, spreading worm corruption to Luna, the moon spirit. And uh, we've got a very nice team of uh, Garu here. And I'm going to let them all introduce themselves, uh, as most of them are new to Hammer the Gods. So whoever wants to go first, if you want to tell us who you are, uh, where we can find you, if anywhere, and who you are playing. I'll go first. All right. My name is Sean. I am on Instagram as at the unruly GM. And tonight I'll be playing a guru named Rainbow. All right. And what kind of guru is Rain? Um, um that is not my shit though. Um, <laughs> he is a ragabash. Yep. Yeah, that one. And I forget, did you go to Silent Strider? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, and what can you tell us about Rain? Like, we kind of talked a little bit about what he's like. Right. I tell you, he loves working with other people <clears throat> because it makes it easier for him. He doesn't have to carry as much. But, you know, he does want the party to succeed because if they succeed, it usually means he gets paid. When he gets paid, he becomes very happy. Um, so he likes very lucrative jobs and wants to make them easy. So he's not against having more teammates because it just means less work that he has to do for the money. You know? But yeah, it's always, always, always uh, swayed by the dollars. Absolutely. Totally understandable. All right. Uh, do you want to pick who's going to go next? Um, let me see. You know what? Now, smiling, looking ready to go. You don't go over here. Yeah. Uh, my name is Mel. Um, I am here today, and that's enough. Um, I'm going to be playing uh, Moonshine, who is a 19-year-old... Uh, um, native Floridian who uh, just, you know, just wants to take care of the planet and um, accidentally rusts things out beyond the point of use and sometimes exits this plane for extended periods. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we kind of talked about moonshine is a bit of like a, an eco warrior. Yeah, he's like a little, a little bit of like a, like a, like a, like a weather underground kind of eco terrorist kind of guy. I love it, love it. Yeah, if you want to pick who's going to follow you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry, and I should say, uh, he's a, a red talon. That's his tribe. Mm, yep. Born under a crescent moon. Yeah, the red talon Arun. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Serious. <laughs> oh, oh you no, mute. you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I muted myself for the awesome intro thing. I wanted to be a professional, <laughs> but forgot to, to unmute. <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. My name is Ethereus Bordeaux. You can find me around the internet as Vampire Himbo. It is true. I am America's Vampire Himbo now. It's been officiated. It is official. Um, yeah. You uh, Also, I would say TikTok and Twitch is Vampire underscore Himbo because somebody beat me to the chase on those. Yeah. Boo hiss those people. Um, yeah, I accidentally <laughs> tried to raid that person the other day because I forgot the underscore. But you, yeah, okay. you. They weren't online. So. That has happened a couple of times, and I would like, I need like an invoice, or should I send an invoice to this person for all the extra people I'm sending <laughs> there? It's fine, I'm sure. And I'm sure they're lovely people. This is all jokes. Um, but yes, tonight I will be playing uh, Winston Wiles. This is my first gay ruin, um, or ga ruin, so not even 
as you can see, I'm new swimming in these waters. I mean, he could he could be a gay guru. Yeah, he's a gay guru. <laughs> um, and I am playing uh, in a, a, from a tribe. The the tribe is the Glasswalkers, and then the Auspice, which I believe is like the Moon Phase, is yep. Bash. Um, so I imagine Winston is an engineer uh, who actually aspires, I would imagine, to work at NASA. I imagine this would be kind of the pinnacle of your professional, <laughs> you know, goals would be to to work at an organization like that, especially at this time in American history. Um, and so he's just very excited <laughs> to be here. Uh, and he does have a, a spirit. He has like a homemade calculator watch that he has. Um, and in it is a spirit that he can use. Um, he has like a spirit packed with it. It'll only come out if he presses 8008 on the calculator. <laughs> if, you know, um, if you know, you know. Um, so yeah, he's uh, super excited. And I, I like the idea of this spirit kind of sharing that the idea of this level of human technology reaching this point i think would be fascinating to the tech spirits of the world as well and so i thought it would be fun to, to bring a little guy along absolutely mm -hmm. all right and cam last but not least yeah uh hi i'm cam um i'm playing a guru uh named augustine uh it's an arun arun um heart warden um Augustine is actually originally a wolf and figured out how to turn human somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I've gotten very lost from being up in the wilds of uh, <laughs> Montana or wherever. Don't know how we're in Florida, but we are. Um, and has sort of gotten a job as a uh, park ranger at uh, the Everglades might have just been stole a uniform and started working one day. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> no one's questioning it too much. Um, yeah, that's what they're up to. Fantastic. Uh, and it's actually really funny. Uh, we're playing Vampire Tomorrow on this channel. Uh, and one of our kindred is also from Montana. So hey. small world. You, you may have known and probably hated them. Let's leave them a uh, note. <laughs> What were you saying? Oh, me? Nothing. I just yeah. said, let's leave them a note. The, the person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, they're they're in a very different time and place. So, mm. uh, yeah. And I mean, if you're if you're watching this channel, probably you already know who I am. But in case this is your first time, I'm Rick or Dungeon Daddy Rick, uh, which you know I always explain, even though I am non-binary. I'm keeping it just because, you know, as uh, Pedro Pascal said, daddy's a state of mind. Hmm. So I don't, I just didn't want to change my logo. I'm just too lazy for that. Uh, and this is my channel. This is Hammer of the Gods. We do all kinds of TTRPG stuff, really gay shit, and sometimes World of Darkness. So we are joining our Garu. Uh, where would you all have gathered in order to kind of kick off this mission? I have to die. Mike, I don't think they had Arby's in this <laughs> in this point in time, <laughs> but I feel like an Arby's is like a very good. That's like good heist. I bet. Planning. I bet just because it looks like they've not updated since 1969. I bet they probably had Waffle House though. Oh uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> and it's Florida, so there's definitely a Waffle House. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about IHOP, but Waffle House is way better. Yeah, like waffle. What do you mean at the waffle? Like, my first thought was actually Denny's. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, uh -huh. there you go. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, Waffle House is the 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 worst of all of them, but also the best of all of them. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> that's right. Uh yeah. So our four guru. Do you all know each other? That is kind of the question that everybody's sort of had is, you know, how does this group know each other? Uh and so my thought on this is you all have been gathered like the heads of the different SEPs throughout the US when they heard about Pentex being involved in NASA and this mission to the moon Pentex is the biggest enemy of Gaia uh, is 
essentially this massive corporation, even in 1969, that serves the worm spirit, which is the essentially enemy uh, at this point, because the worm has been so corrupted, uh, it wants to destroy everything, especially Gaia. And so Garu, as the warriors and chosen of Gaia, are here to protect her as best they can. So uh, do you all know each other or is this your first time being assembled? I think Moonshine might've met Augustine at some point. Cause Augustine, you work in the parks, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I have a feeling. Yeah, we've probably run into each other. Kind of a small, smallish. I think left. Winston may not be local. I think that like Winston is from one of the sets that like wanted to learn more about this and it makes sense that they would uh send a big old nerd like Winston to <laughs> check it out. Yeah, yeah, and I mean oh, go ahead, Sean. Sorry. Oh no, I was gonna say Rain wouldn't know anyone either. He just <clears throat> knows that he's supposed to meet some people somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, Ethereus, you know, I kind of mentioned to you before stream that in 1969, you know, with civil rights being a pretty recent thing uh, and NASA being committed since their inception to diversity, uh, I mean, it would probably be an especially exciting place to be, like a place where you can see people of all different races, religions, creeds, all gathered in this one place for this really big mission. And especially, you know, in the middle of the Cold War when, uh, you know, you gotta beat the commies. Even mm -hmm. though here in 2024, we're like, you know, commies are actually not that bad. Just <laughs> Russia, kind of. <laughs> Maybe Russia is not so great. Yeah, I think that I imagine um all of that in addition to the rockets like just the the base conceptualization of humanity just reaching that far or touching that far i think is both the uh, the like more umbral or like metaphysical ramifications and manifestations of that alongside the like just historic like normal kind of ramifications of that make this like a, a very very big deal to I, yep. in my mind, you know that scene in heist movies where they like lay out the blue arc, the like blue paper. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I think Winston's coming to this ready. Yeah, oh, and I, I think probably you know, even though Waffle House kind of has a reputation, uh, you might not break out the maps of Cape Canaveral necessarily, especially not specifically the. Uh, Kennedy Space Center, because that might be a little suspicious, uh, mm -hmm. as this is July 1969. Uh, July 16th is when Apollo 11 launched, and uh, the whole world was watching. Like, everyone everywhere was very, very focused on what was happening in this city at this point in time, so probably four people <laughs> in a Waffle House with a map of, hey, look, this is where... Uh, but you know what? Maybe it's not that suspicious, actually. No, no, no. I can't think of a good... What are we going to say? Oh, we're planning a surprise party. <laughs> I can't think of... Well, good, well maybe it's commemorative. Maybe it's just a commemorative map. There we go. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> thought of that angle. You yeah, because yeah, back then there was no technology. Looked at, looking at maps and looking at atlases, well, that was regular business. Yeah, maybe you're just trying to find parking. And you're like, where in the world is the parking lot at the Space Center? Hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So maybe it's not that weird after all. Can I ask, like, out of character? Does anybody have any like property or, um, the like werewolf equivalent of a haven that we could like chill at or scheme <laughs> at? Uh, I mean, Augustine has the Everglades, but that's a it's a little way yeah. away. Okay. If you also, don't mind, you know, the alligators. You gotta, you gotta get friendly <laughs> with the alligators. But <laughs> I'm like, I mean, you got surfaces. That's, yeah, I, I that's a requirement, yeah. pretty I much. I may have an in with somebody at a local hotel because I move around a lot. There we go. There we could comfortably and without worry roll out our map and, and plan our stuff without looking like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> suspicious as hell. <laughs> but, but, you know, as Sean said, you know, at this point in time, it's not like you all had cell phones or GPS that you could just pull up. So it hmm. could make a lot of sense for you to have this map 
and just be like, you know what, we're going to try and get the best spot possible. Uh, and the other, I guess, important detail here is, would you all be going on launch day? Or would this be maybe a day or two before? I think a day or two before. What would yeah. Be yeah, time? because security and everything is going to be high on launch day. Yeah. Yeah, launch day is yeah. kind of cutting it close, it seems. That sure. Uh, we may need to be here for launch day, but I think the idea of like, getting there on launch day or like starting to. Um, yeah. Winston is like a recon specialist. So I think the larger the lead time they have between now and this, like the more information they're able to get. Like the Batman. Better. Like <laughs> Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what if, yeah, what if we have like a couple like rooms at like a motor inn or something? Because yeah. like, you know. Gainesville is not that close. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really not. Okay. It's really not. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I just dropped in our Discord chat some maps for you uh, of the area. Uh, some, oh, I mean, some of them are like imagine. the maps of the current uh, kind of layout. So it's not going to be exactly 100% uh, oh, accurate wow. to this date and time. Oh but uh, the central point is definitely the vehicle assembly building, uh, which is pictured behind us here on this lovely layout. Uh, mm. And that is where the different parts of the shuttle are assembled, brought together for it to be put on the launcher uh, and then wheeled out to the actual launch pad. So, you so know if we was going to like likely. sabotage it, we would need to sabotage it over there. And you all would know, you, you have been given specific instructions that if you cause the shuttle to malfunction in any kind of way, like delay the mission, anything like that, that would also be really bad because that will raise a lot of red flags. So you need to do this very subtly and secretly without being caught and without breaking the veil, which is very similar to the masquerade for Kindred, which is the kind of idea that humans don't know Garu exists, that there are things out there that can change into other things. Can I ask for context, just like politically in Werewolf the Apocalypse, like how does Breaking the Veil, how would you like compare that to Breaking the Masquerade? Is it like less of a faux pas, it seems? <sighs> less uh, because, I don't know, it seems like Kindred don't really have anything equivalent to Delirium that Garu have uh, because realistically shape-changing or being a hulking bestial creature is a little bit more scary than somebody who's just got some sharp teeth if you're, if you're really thinking about it. Uh, so realistically, uh, the way that Delirium works is people will panic, they'll flee uh, and then they will try to rationalize it any way they can that you know mm. it was just a really big rabid dog or that they had a hallucination or you know they made it all up who knows what you know all kinds of things the issue uh, that is less of an issue in 1969 because there aren't quite as many cameras and things like that uh, but the issue here would be because there are already going to be a lot of people camped out trying to get a good spot for this, cameras and video cameras specifically. Uh, if they see you shifting or in, say, the Krinos form, because the, the lupus form would probably be fine. That probably wouldn't even be something people would question, you know, like, hey, there's a dog. Uh, but the actual more mystical, scary forms uh, if you were to be caught on camera, that's some solid proof. And uh, while Garu society is not quite as structured as Kindred society, there's not like a, a prince per se of a specific city, uh, the Septs would still deal with that pretty harshly. So if someone were to say, you know, horribly botch this mission, uh, chances are you're going to be you're going to regret it. <laughs> mm. um, there's, a, there's a big thing with uh, Garu Society where there is a ritual dagger made of silver 
which is something that people will often fight with in like ritualistic combat. You, you can imagine that uh, something like that might be involved in order to essentially like defend your honor. Mm. Wow. Okay. Interesting. It's a, it's a little more brutal in some ways, but also a little bit more chaotic. see that um for rights and out of character gang team pack <laughs> i did take <laughs> right of the forgetful or forgetful record which i think i want to use as like the last you know um like a hail mary to erase like our faces from surveillance i've also never used it could not speak to its success or failure rates but i do want to <laughs> like identify it as a thing or a possibility that's great. Um, oh, uh, Moonshine has render down, which basically like instantly decays, right? But, but that's what we kind of decided, like it can kind of yeah. rust out whatever. Yeah. Um, so that could, you know, be really bad. Like I think Moonshine's going to need like a lot of help from Winston to like not touch the wrong thing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the oh, thing yeah. that we kind of talked in session zero about is like I had that mental image of Fern Gully with you know Hexus where it just is en enveloped by the plants. Mm. So yeah. Definitely moonshine gives me big Fern Gully vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, like this is what he's wearing. Like the, the, he has no <laughs> there's no tactical like the, he doesn't know what that word means. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know what? It's the 60s, so it's not even that weird. <laughs> it's true. So I could say that I brought a tent. So I could be a camper if we wanted like uh our own campsite. We could have a campsite for stakeouts. I'm not opposed to that. That seems logical. Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of information that way. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I just love camping. <laughs> I feel like me too. I feel like it's definitely canon that if Moonshine doesn't, you know, horribly tragically die in this mission, that definitely the next month, uh, August of '69, he's definitely going to Woodstock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's. I definitely have that map in my backpack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic um really quickly just like conceptually for me once we uh -huh. this is for ethereus once we uh are able to breach the building or we're able to get inside to the uh assemble the vehicle assembly building the ultimate goal the thing we need to bring the mission home is Oh, well, sorry. I was like, <laughs> yeah, pause it. To... All right. I should have, let me phrase it as a question. What is uh, yeah. the ultimate? So that is something that you are not entirely clear on. Uh, mm. You know that they plan to spread this corruption. Uh, you know that Pentex has a lot of different ways that they do that. Uh, especially in 1969, uh, they would have, you know, there's a major subsidy of Pentex, uh, King Breweries and Distilleries, uh, which features heavily in our Detroit by Moonlight game, uh, that they spread this corruption by putting what is called a bane, which is a spirit from the Umbra. It is a worm spirit. Uh, they put like a very diluted version into their alcohol in very random amounts. It's not like every single bottle because then people would just not get it like if people all started losing their minds and attacking everyone every time they drank a king beer or anything from that company they wouldn't keep doing it but if one in a hundred one in a thousand does people don't really question it quite so much so they do things in very very sneaky ways like that uh also things like they will infuse horror movies so when you go to like rent a vhs they can infuse people with a bane through that uh, yeah yeah it, it's very insidious uh they do it through makeup they do it through 
uh, sanitation, just anything and everything. They are a huge corporation, uh, much like real life mega corporations that buy up everything they can. They have their fingers in everything possible. Uh, just a, a little bit of lore for everyone. Pentex actually started back in 1865 as an oil company. So they got super rich in that early oil industry. And uh, that's just kind of been the downfall ever since. So. So knowing that, uh, you, you know that there are a lot of possibilities. You know that you could potentially, uh, once you're there, for uh, lack of a better word, sniff it out. Okay. Got it. Um, where would be the campground if we're looking at the map? Well, it's not a campground so much as people were just camping out like they would bring their campers and things and just mm -hmm. be there anywhere that they could. Okay. Just trying to get as close as possible. So, you know, you're not going to be able to get super close mm -hmm. with a camper, but, okay. you know, in the vicinity, the gotcha, ballpark. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, it's, <laughs> I love a map. <laughs> I don't know how you knew. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. So the bottom right corner of this, one of them has like all the, shows the vehicle assembly building as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so <laughs> actually, no, I picked a stupid character. I gave, I gave Moonshine my, my intelligence one star. Um, <laughs> so are we trying to get on this spaceship? <laughs> Is that what we're trying to do? Are we trying to board it? Unfortunately, I don't think so. If, okay. if that was the case, I'd be a lot more excited about this. <laughs> My understanding is that we're supposed to go in. We're supposed to identify any anomalies, anything that shows the Pentex are trying to spread their corruption. Uh, take that out presumably and then do so with as little as effect on the actual mission itself is is my take but i am open to input from others oh no they never tell me the directive because i just misunderstand it mm -hmm. i'm here to be helpful i appreciate that like winston here. Uh, i'm gonna have you give us the uh first roll of the game. Give me intelligence and occult, please. Okay, let's see. So my occult is a three, and my intelligence is two. And so I'm going to be rolling five d10, and then at this point, I have no rage. Two rage. We're all two starting rage. at two. Yeah. Okay, and so the two rightmost dice will be... Yeah, because yeah, you, okay. all, you all need rage for a lot of your abilities, so if you had no rage, that is definitely a disadvantage. Right. So uh, the two dice on the right were both sevens. Um, okay. So the two rage dice. And then the other dice were seven, nine, and two. Amazing. Uh, so only one of them was not a success. Uh, so four out of five successes. So, uh, Winston, you have heard stories. Uh, Ragabash aren't necessarily known for stories, per se. Uh, it's more the Galliards. They're kind of the bards of Garu. But you have heard stories of how wolves have gone to the moon in the past. Humans are not the first ones to go to the moon. They're just the most recent. Mm. So you know that worst case scenario, if you could not stop this before the launch, you have a backup plan. You know, I have heard stories these are not verified. I haven't been able to find a shred of evidence to this point, but um, I've heard it enough from from enough gay Ru, <laughs> still doing gay Ru, um, <laughs> to in in ones that I give enough enough credit to to lend this maybe maybe some validity that there have been instances of Peru going up to the moon and they've done so and what it involves would be fascinating to unpack, but 
I think maybe worst case scenario, if things don't go the way that we would like them to go, we can try and uh, maybe, you know, handle things on a lunar level. And he's like trying to repress the excitement he has with that <laughs> prospect on that and just present it as like an objective option. Rick, so yes. as an umbral traveler, has Moonshine gone to the moon? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, You know what? I'm going to have you give me the same role. Okay. Wait, can you tell, tell me what the two are again? Yeah, it is occult and intelligence. Occult and intelligence. Ah, yes. My most powerful stat, intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, uh, ooh, two eights, a 10, and a five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so two successes. Um. You have probably heard some similar stories. Uh, you know that it is not easy to get to. That is for sure. So okay. it, it, it's not something that you could confidently say, like, you've been to the earthly Umbra and all over it. But beyond that, it is a little bit tricky. Uh, and you would probably need to ask for some help. Okay. But is it something where, like, you could you you would use the umbra to travel there like that's how that's how people do it yeah absolutely okay but you do know that uh you can you can travel through the umbra say you know from a waffle house uh or from a from a motel <laughs> six or whatever uh to another location on the physical world kind of sidestepping all of the physical travel uh sometimes it's going to be shorter sometimes it's going to be Maybe not longer, but more treacherous uh, in the Umbra. But depending on where you're trying to come out, it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, because if you're trying to come out, say, in the middle of like NASA, mm -hmm. there's a thing called the gauntlet, um, which is essentially the barrier that separates the physical world from the Umbra. And it is this kind of psychic spiritual maelstrom that is a little bit difficult to pass through. Uh, that's why Garu can do it and not humans, typically. Um, and so in places like a lab, uh, or the vehicle assembly building, just for, for example, uh, the gauntlet is much, much higher there. So it is very difficult to get through. Uh, it is not very connected with Gaia places like Cairns or more natural locations. The gauntlet is typically a lot lower. Got it. So. Once you're in there, or, you know, if you were trying to get in through the Umbra, it's going to be a little bit tricky. It is not important. <coughs> it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. And same goes for the moon. Uh, you know, logically, you should be able to travel there uh, and then cross back over. The only issue is it is still the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do not have the right equipment... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna end really badly for you so it's possible but you'll need to steal some stuff first okay or acquire a, 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 acquire not steal strategically be borrow a few yeah items. yeah <laughs> um great well i think to, and tell me if this is not quite right but um I moonshine can tell people that basically like I can help us if we want to get to like the outside of a building that like I can kind of get us like and sort of like apparate us not apparate us there but I can move us through the umbra to like we can't go through the door necessarily but like I can definitely get us like there is that and it, de true? it depends on the it depends on the location uh mm -hmm. going from like a motel to say the waffle house just to keep you know mm -hmm. The same kind of thing. A Waffle House wouldn't be quite as difficult as like a science lab where you're doing things that are a little bit more advanced, a little bit more technological, uh, which would be more associated with the spirit of the weaver rather than like the wild, which is sort of sort of allied with the Garu. Because uh, there's there's the triumvirate, which is the weaver, the wild, and the worm. Um, they're kind of like the, the three that are right below Gaia in terms of level of power, 
spirit wise. Um, so that, okay. I mean, Waffle House would be doable, but yeah, but like vehicle assembly building, <laughs> also doable. Okay, a lot more difficult. So from from like the Waffle House or your motel, um, I would say it would probably be like three successes in theory, uh, which wouldn't be very hard, uh, especially because I believe that Winston is pretty good uh, with the occult. Um, oh, but you didn't take right of the Shadow Passage, did you? I didn't. <clears throat> I took right okay. of the Forgetful Record. But I okay. can, um, through RP, cheer you on. Hell <laughs> yeah. Well, so the nice thing is, is for every Garo who has that right, you get two dice to add to your die pool. But for every Garo who is with you crossing over, whether they have it or not, you still get one. So for everyone who's with you, you get at least one. Um, what is your, uh, I think it's your wisdom in a cult? Me? Mm -hmm. uh that is four okay so that's not terrible uh i can tell you by yourself it would be literally impossible without if you got two crits with your four uh you could possibly do it but that's a uh, very long odds okay. but with everyone else uh, i believe augustine took right of shadow passage as well yes i did okay so from Augustine, you get two die. So it takes you up to six. From the other two, another two. So you have a lot better odds. So okay. I, I they improve say... if we physically get closer in like the amount of, of travel distance, or does that not unfortunately, matter at all? Unfortunately, that wouldn't do it. It's more about where you're physically going to. Got it. Okay. So, I mean, it is doable it would just not be very easy uh and the biggest risk uh would be getting stuck in the umbra because after long enough it is very deadly and you would you would definitely know that um great but the the difficulty because i took umbral traveler the difficulty to return is reduced by one when okay. you're the right so master so a little easier, a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the benefits of taking that background. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Session zeros are important. Absolutely. Um, Rick, I'm going to send you, just because I'm so creepy, um, but the <laughs> <laughs> as part of the Umbral Traveler, like basically Moonshine can see ghosts. And so in 1967, the Apollo 1 tragedy did occur yeah. at NASA. And so I just am, I just sent you the discord about it just to warn you about the ghosts that Moonshine may or may not see. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, but I'm glad that you pointed that out. Um, I see dead people. <laughs> I mean, it's Florida, so you probably see a, a fair number of dead people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Not that unusual for you. Um, yeah, no, that's a fantastic point. So, yeah, I think that uh, I think that you all have at least a loose plan, sort of, at least for where you're going. How to get there, though, is the real issue. And once we get there, um, I, uh, out of character, do you have uh, blissful ignorance, which means I think I can make myself invisible, but I think it's like the first level of Unseen Passage where you can't move with it. Yep. So I'd have to be standing, like, still. So, I mean, it isn't... Is it going to make me solid stake? Probably not. But <laughs> I do think it... Hopefully it'll help us in this, this like, stealth endeavor. Yeah, like, basically, if you are pretty sure your cover got blown, you could just press up against the wall really hard and mm. just... Because uh, it's granted by a chameleon spirit, you embrace your inner chameleon and uh, just become one with the wall, essentially. Hell yeah. I'm into that. And, that's a good, and you know what? Thank you so much, because my 
I think my brain is running like all the new mechanics. I would not have even thought that creatively <laughs> to like just <laughs> after being caught, just like just to stick to a wall to disappear. <laughs> but of course, of course, of course. This like I said, I, I love Werewolf. I love introducing people to Werewolf. This is my shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will say, I can't put a gun in a tattoo vampire, the masquerade. Where's the tattoo <laughs> gun mechanic? That's what yeah. I want to know. <laughs> Well, it's because, you know, Kindred, their tattoos all fade every time they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a shame. So, I will say, uh, some of you do have some useful advantages here. Uh, mm -hmm. Some uh, masks, some contacts, things like that, that could be helpful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do have my calculator spirit. <laughs> That's true. That's true. What do you call your spirit companion? Uh, their name is Beep Boop. Adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just I came up with that. On, well, I didn't come up with it on the spot. I just thought of the, the name. Of the no, spot. you came I'm up. I'm sure there's it. like a, a Beep Boop in history elsewhere. <laughs> the first. First of its name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so with those advantages uh, I think that it's reasonable to say that you could have some kind of cover story to possibly get a little bit further than the average uh, civilian could get into NASA it won't get you necessarily like into the actual assembly building because that would be pretty high level clearance but at least to get further. Uh, I think that Winston for sure would volunteer. <laughs> I absolutely have uh, come prepared for this exact, this exact conclusion. If it is necessary for one of us to breach the building's parameters, I would like to volunteer. I can take, I will fall on that sword for this team out of commitment to our new shared sense of like, friendship and cohesion as a pack so i just want to throw that out there i am willing to to do that for all of us there's nothing suspicious about that no. <clears throat> and sean i will i will mention uh one of your gifts uh the spider song mm -hmm. could be potentially useful uh, because you're able to essentially tap into, I mean, it's 1969, so everybody's using a landline. Uh, you can tap into phone lines and listen into conversation, Ooh. fun things like that. Yes, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm going to offer it up to the party. So, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can listen to uh, a couple of phone calls if we need just uh let me know which phones to tap into and i may or may be able to tap into them wow that's super fucking cool i, <laughs> I, I love the idea that that's just moonshine's reaction <laughs> <laughs> just so excited <laughs> Augustine, you, yes. you got you got friends, right? Friends, friends in high places. It depends what you mean by high places, but the space center is in the middle of a national wildlife refuge. I might know some people there. There's nothing higher than mm. space. Points were made. Points were made. Well, who work at the I might be. refuge. Yeah, Rain also has some some contacts. Yeah. Um, yes. I have yeah. contacts. Who would they be? <laughs> so you don't necessarily know who they are, uh, but you know how to get in touch with them. Let's I know how to find people. people. I know how to get in touch with people. Gotcha. Yeah. Like you know, you know who to call. To get in touch with the right people. Cool. So I go look. I'm like, 
not only can I tap into phones, I can tap into relationships. So if y'all need something, all right, me. But in a more 1969 type slang. <laughs> I'd, I'd feel like Hala is, you know, fitting for 1969. It works. Uh. I think our plan is missing a few crucial details, just the entry point, point of entry. I do like the idea of the, the, the selfless sacrifice that I was willing to make where and I pretend to be an ass employee and we leverage some of our context that way. Um, but I, I do think even say that's successful once I am inside the facilities, I, I think sophisticating that area of the plan in particular seems like it would be a good idea. Yeah, what happens once you're inside? Exactly. Oh, so it'd be like reconnaissance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what? I could use, he's going to look lovingly at his little homemade calculator watch. <laughs> I could use Beep Boop. Yeah. Maybe once we get inside. Uh, I'll use Beep Boop. Beep Boop can do a little bit of reconnaissance, make sure that everything is on the up and up and that it's kosher for us to move. Um, and then out of character, can Beep Boop do any of that, Rick? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hypothetically, uh, depends okay. on how well you roll. But yeah, that is possible. Okay. But I do have a lot of training in stealth and in uh, these kind of missions. I've had a lot of success in this area. So if, if we need help or if anybody needs any help or any tidbits on how to remain completely notable, noticeless, noticeable. I'm trying to think of what the, the antithesis of noticeable is. Same if you kind of want to be invisible, <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm support supportive of that. And then mm -hmm. maybe we can go at nighttime. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. Cover of night. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I so I took three dots in mask, but I don't uh -huh. think I can like give Winston any of the benefits of <laughs> like not existing as a person. <laughs> As far well, as all records are concerned. Yeah, it's it's the records. And so, I mean, realistically, you can't give that to him. But Moonshine has the ability to pass things like an FBI screening, uh, you know, background checks. So maybe I train Moonshine on a bunch of nerdy NASA shit so that or, <laughs> they or can hear pass me at NASA. You go together. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, I could come with you. And, and how about... Um, Maybe we can call somebody, uh, Mr. Bo, maybe we could call somebody and say, oh, such and such person's coming. They're real important. And you should just let in whoever is coming along with them. I will not talk on this mission. I promise you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm dying at Mr. Bo. <laughs> Mr. Bo, do you think there's oh. someone we could talk to you about it? Well, uh. I think I could put in a call or two right now. <laughs> Cash in some favors. Yeah. So who is calling which contacts? Um, so I guess I will call Wayne Security. Okay. So he's pretty, pretty low level, so I mean he can't get everything, but right you know, enough to at least get us through the front door. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to have you do is give me, hmm, give me charisma plus persuasion. Ooh, and if they can get us one of those like Tom Cruise descend from the ceiling mission impossible, <laughs> like setups, they could throw yeah, one of those in there. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called, but yeah, one of those would be sick. <laughs> Did you say charisma and persuasion? Yep. All right. And that's two two dice. How many dots do you have in each? I have in uh, charisma, I, one each, actually. 
Okay. Yeah. So it is two. And uh, just so you know, mm -hmm. because you have two rage, they are both rage dice. So. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. Just got dinner. All good. <laughs> It was a good time, man. <laughs> um, all right, so I got two rolls. Cool. Um, and actually, uh, you said you took three dots in contact? In contact? Mm -hmm. In contact. Okay, yeah, you know what? Go ahead and add those three, because that would add to that. So you got five total. Thank you. Because, uh... <laughs> yeah, uh... Two, two die whenever you've got two rage, like when all of your dice are rage dice, uh -huh. you're, you're, you're playing with fire. So my rage were uh, three and eight. Okay. And then I got, because we rolled D10, right? Yep. And then I got um, seven, five, nine for the others. Okay. So three successes. That's not bad. Um, yeah. So you're calling up security and... Uh, Someone answers. It doesn't say who they are, uh, but they do. Let me ask this. Uh, would you do this with everyone else present or would you like step out to a payphone or um, you have a little bit more privacy? Yeah, I go out. I, I would go out to a payphone. I go out to a payphone. Okay. So the voice that answers sounds like it's using some kind of like voice modulator to mask their voice. And they say, is this rainbow? Yes, it is. Ooh. Irrelevant. You're the missions ago. Excuse me. The infiltration, you're still planning on proceeding. We are good. I'll make sure that you all can get in. What's the and password? There is no password. Just checking. <laughs> and just for clarification, I'll make sure you all can get in and that you can get out. Will it be difficult? The getting out, that depends on you. I heard you were a professional, so I am. I have faith in you. And there's a, a bonus in it if none of them escape. Very well. I appreciate your help. And you just hear click. And go back to everybody else. So I made a phone call. I talked to a person, not my particular person, but this person said they would be able to get us all in and all out. Um, we were in control of how difficult the exit may be. Ooh, do you, question. Do you mind if I spoke? Okay. It was a left-handed cigarette, so you guys okay with that? <laughs> All right. So, you know. One of my flaws is I took a uh, substance addiction. So, I mean, that's my yeah. uh, one. So, go ahead and indulge. In the, the 1969 parlance, smoking dope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely does not mean weed anymore. <laughs> no, it does not. No, it does not. Uh, learned that very quickly being a social <laughs> worker. <laughs> So, you guys all want to sneak in? Uh, well, I, 
Mr. Winston, you could still pretend to be a, a, a NASA worker if you wanted, even if we sneak in. Yeah, that that sounds. <clears throat> he's like a little bit deflated, but he's still like <laughs> just happy to have been like made the trip. He's still happy, yeah. to, be, yeah. he's still just happy to be there. <laughs> I mean, if 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 the tactical opportunity presents itself, wherein I could pretend and portray <laughs> the identity of a NASA employee, then I will take advantage of such an opportunity should it present itself. But I'm fine with what I walk over to Winston, pat him on the back, and say, Chin up. <laughs> I Out of curiosity, like how is it. how are all of our Garu dressed in their human forms? So I am dressed in 1969, just black slacks with a, almost a men in black type thing, but minus the jacket with a tie, a black tie. Love it. Augustine is in their park ranger uniform because it is the only clothes they have. <laughs> so they may need another outfit. <laughs> they might. I, can, oh, yeah. I feel a montage of brewing. <laughs> oh boy. Didn't know it was um, going to be shopping one shot, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Winston is in, he's got like gray snakeskin shoes. He's got gray slacks. He has a white kind of dress shirt, and he has a big yellow bow tie that's, like, all intricate in design, and it's, like, all the way up here. And, he of course, has, like, a complimentary colored pocket protector with, like, three very neat pins in it. Oh, and, of course, of course the, the watch that holds a beep boot. Amazing. Uh, Moochide's wear this shirt and... Um... <laughs> Some ripped up jeans. Tie dye is in. Tie dye is in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, bell like, bottoms. <laughs> bell, yeah, bell, like, bell bottoms with like the knees all fucked up and like <laughs> has like back length hair. So I think with the mask, um, with, with like all of, all of his dots and mask, probably his fake ID is a woman's fake ID. Cause like he weighs like 95 pounds. And so like he just has to like put his hair up in a bun and like throw on a dress and like, yeah. That, that's easier than yeah <laughs> like, I mean, you know, even though, though, you know my image of moonshine but i'm <laughs> glad you described them yeah <laughs> even even though hippies are very uh in at the moment you know long hair in 1969 on a man is still a little bit unheard of you know outside mm. of that subculture so you know it, it makes sense that most people would probably assume especially if they don't look very closely at moonshine that he is a woman. So, yeah, might as well play on that advantage. Yeah, and I don't mind. Um, yeah, I mean, especially in like business clothes, it's just not, it's just not done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, are we doing anything to acquire other clothes for Augustine before you all uh, try to go in? <laughs> We do need that, but additionally, I think it would be really strategically sound for us to identify the way through which we'll exit the NASA facility after we have successfully dealt with whatever it is. And I'd like to also reemphasize that we don't know what that will be, but I do think one thing that we do know is that there will be a necessity for an escape. So I think that'd be worth that'd be worth discussing and picking out. You know what? We also need a danger room. Word, mm. just shout out when we hear it wherever you are run <laughs> so i'm thinking pineapples <laughs> pineapples always, it is it's always pineapple what do we think team augustine moonshine pineapples oh, good yeah chat says start a howl <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, I don't know if Winston notices, but I'm occasionally, you know, I'm not like a super, I'm more of a, just a casual dresser, but I am checking out the fit. Uh, Winston, it is, it is no, like, he probably has 17 copies of this exact outfit <laughs> with just like maybe like a different like bow tie <laughs> for him. It, this is like the, the the other, you know, glass walkers dressed like this. And so he, this is just how 
but yeah and so it would it would go above his head he would probably think you were like suspicious of him or something. <laughs> yeah rain rain mm-hmm. like the way that you described his outfit kind of it's giving like malcolm x you know with that very like we're gonna dress up kind of look and uh then winston it's still dressed up but has a little bit more flair to it yeah well more i mean not even so much dressing up. Uh, that's why I said men in black, because it's just really basic. It's like, sure. Just the, the basic trousers, basic pants, and I'm just like, oh, man, colors. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows you could do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> right. So where are you all going to acquire some other clothes? <clears throat> hmm. I think this predates the concept of the mall i'm pretty sure right uh, yeah no nah, i mean the 60s or like a like a woolworths or something like that or sears i'm sure sears. oh yeah mm. i i imagine winston would not let augustine use one of the 80s. suits that he packed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh, uh, probably no, even there's like, like a less than game. small probability that you may spill something <laughs> on this or do something that would alter the color of this garment and so unfortunately <laughs> Augustine um, but I do love your park ranger outfit I think that it really complements your hair and eyes thank you it wasn't why I chose it it's just, it's just what we wear <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's important <laughs> Yeah, um, and you definitely would have seen like the other rangers if you know you ran into them on their day off that they totally wear other clothes. <laughs> really, it, fashion is not something that Augustine understands or mm-hmm. like has any real concept of. I think yeah. it's just kind of theoretically understands. Yeah, but realistically, yeah. Do you recognize the rangers when they're not in uniform? It's a great question. Yeah. <gasps> It's like seeing your teacher at the grocery store. Oh yeah, it's like like paradigm smell, shifting. You're like, you exist outside of school. What fresh hell? That's <laughs> where oh, the wolf senses come in handy, and you can kind of like, okay, I recognize you. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Uh, you would probably be like, oh yeah, no, I know their smell. Like you yeah. see them from a distance, you're like, who is that? And then you know the wind shifts. You're like, oh yeah, no. That's Steve. Got it. Yeah, that's Jeff from accounting. That's what I'm getting. Notes of Jeff here. Yeah. Uh, Augustine, I'll take you to the to the store so you can buy some clothes. I don't have any money. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, realistically, you all could are. potentially steal. Yeah, we yeah. could. Yeah, I'm gonna like. Uh, I'm gonna what's it called? Um, shadow passage into a store and shadow passage out. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Oh amazing! Oh Winston yes. is deaf. Hearing this, I would like to see this. I think the <laughs> idea of you doing that into a seer seems like very cool. Also, if I if there's something that I wanted to get there, there are a couple of blenders and other items. So if we, I don't know if the Shadow Passage could necessarily navigate itself over to that realm of Sears as well, but I just want to throw that out there as just like an option for all of us to consider with uh, equal benefit to all of us. Yeah, I, I guess we could just walk in, but it'll be faster if we go this way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I will, I will let you know, uh, I, I will allow it if Winston goes with you, because... Your ability, Winston, uh, to put things into storage, essentially, would, oh, yeah. would work here. Uh, it will slightly increase the difficulty, but only slightly. Uh, enough that it would it would balance out with Moonshine's uh, decrease of one. So, I didn't still, even think the of the crime opportunities when I took that skill. <laughs> Well, the idea that like you could just shoplift into your forearm and yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. just be, like the, the issue the issue with using shadow passage is that uh, so I gave everyone the right of dedication for free because hmm. normally if you go into the Umbra or if you shapeshift uh, 
you know, we've all probably seen werewolf movies or the Hulk where clothes get ripped and destroyed. Mm. Uh, that would happen to all of you, whether it's the Umbra or shapeshifting. You would come out naked on the other side, normally. With the right of dedication, you have a set of clothes for, you know, Augustine, that's the set of clothes that they own. <laughs> that they just always have those clothes. Mm. Uh, for the rest of you, you've chosen an outfit that is kind of your standard uh, that you know whenever you come out, you'll you'll be dressed in that, no matter what you went in as. Uh, Can you turn that on and off at will? Like if Winston wanted to show up tits out, would he be able to do that? <laughs> um, I mean, in theory, yes, because you could shape shift and then like shift back. Mm. And because it is free to go from human to lupus form, uh, you could just be a dog for a little bit, run around and then shift back and be like, okay. Because that's a good description. Like seeing uh, a naked man apparate out of nowhere. I don't want us to downplay <laughs> the tactical <laughs> advantage of that. Really throw the enemy off. I mean, also, you know, the the delirium would be a huge uh, mm. distraction as well. But mm. yeah, yeah, I love this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna need a roll in just a second because. I have completely blanked on what it is you need to roll, unless you have that handy... Ooh, for Shadow Passage? Mm -hmm. uh, I no. also have Shadow Passage. So. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you know what? It probably would be good for for Augustine to go so that like they can try on the clothes. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know what? Yeah, I see that. Just a, just a group uh, five-finger discount. It's totally mm -hmm. fine. I yeah, see no, no you gotta there. go as a team. You need somebody to look out. That's true. Is that what is that what Rain's there for? No, that's what I'm there for. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thought you were the wheel man. Yeah. Rain's oh, that's a good man. point. <laughs> Can't be both. See, I'm like the, the backpack we are gonna start out. in. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. It's off. renown and a cult. That's oh, what the perfect. dice pool is. Yeah, so any any renown, uh, which I think all of yours are one, so uh, yeah. it really doesn't make a difference which one you pick. Yeah. Oh, wait, I thought one of them was two. Was it? Yeah. Let me just look real quick. Assign two, I mean, dots, be. two dots to the one associated with your tribe and then one to the other two. All right, Perfect. so that's five to start unless August... Wait, no, I'm, I'm, driving, I'm driving the Umbral bus. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless anybody else has better occult, who also has shadow passage. Um, yeah. I don't have shadow passage. I got yeah. three occult, but no shadow passage. Yeah, Augustine, how? What's your? <laughs> Not better than that. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got right. just one. So. Oof. That's five for me, plus two for Augustine, plus one for Winston. Plus one for Mr. Bo. So we've got a nice powdered dice working here. That's nine. Little there we go. Touchdown. Oh boy. There's three ones in this tray. Oh no. <laughs> no. Oh my God. There's one nine. I'm going to go high to low. You got a nine, two fives. A four, a th two threes, and three ones. Oh, that's rough because that is one success Bad roll. and a brutal failure. Um, yeah, what's our threshold for success? Is it six? Uh, right now, because you are going from the, the motel, uh, it mm -hmm. is three that you got to get. So uh, the issue is not so much whether you did or didn't cross over. You do. Uh, mm -hmm. You are going to take two, uh, I always forget which, uh, two aggravated willpower damage. So okay. that is the more like, so there's there's two types of damage in this. There's uh, superficial and aggravated. Aggravated is more serious. It's harder to recover from. Got so it. So you have hurt your willpower, which some of your abilities do require willpower. So keep that in mind. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, everyone. Well, and it's it's just you. You're the one leading it, so you're the one who takes the willpower damage. Oh great. Oh good. I thought everybody did. That's fine. 
Moonshine thinks that, but like everybody else, just like oh, that was weird. Yeah. You're, we forgive you? Question mark. So uh, tell me, Moonshine. I, I'm leaving this up to you. What does it look like whenever you do this right and you cross over into the Umbra? Like what uh, happens to our party? <clears throat> so it's kind of like when Dorothy goes into Oz. So everything gets brighter and all the plants look wrong. And um, then it's like, there's probably like a lot of doors and they, maybe they're like wobbling around and stuff, but generally I can tell which is the right one. So it might've been that like, yes. <laughs> it might've <laughs> been like, like I kind of like peeked into a couple doors and was like, oh no. Oh no, not that one. Okay, y'all, here we go. <laughs> Just like a couple of them, like hit you in the face, but they're not physical doors. No, yeah, just the things that I have now seen. Yeah, you can't unsee it. Can't, can't exactly. Unsee it. And so, as the four of you cross over into the Umbra, uh, you have gone from this motel room to what appears to be a very swampy. It's black lit. Uh, it looks like you know those posters you've seen in like the back of smoke shops that kind of thing like the day glow look uh things are kind of outlined with this neon color uh just depending on what it is you know there's swampy uh plants grasses that stick up out of this ankle deep water uh and you can see things in the water you're not quite sure you know that they're spirits but you're not quite sure what kind uh all around you you can see these massive mosquitoes and dragonflies with ridiculous numbers of wings and legs. And some of them look like they're weird combinations of things, like a, a dragonfly mixed with a centipede. Like it's extremely long with dozens and dozens of legs just undulating through the air. And so you have now successfully crossed into the Umbra. The issue is, do you know how to get to Sears? Because in the Umbra, things don't work quite the same as they do on Earth. Uh, umbral travel is not like one for one. It's not like you're directly, you know, oh, it's 20 feet that way, so I'm going to go <clears throat> that way. Uh, so what I now need is survival. Or if your occult's better, I'd let you use occult uh, and intelligence, please. Oh, man, I did not anticipate having to roll intelligence so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so question for you, Rick. Yes. Th because like distance isn't really a thing, right? Mm -hmm. I can take them to the Sears in Gainesville because I know where that one is. <laughs> yeah, you, you could. You could. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to try. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Nope. Wait. Okay. Uh, I got a nine and a seven and a four and a two. So two okay. successes. Yeah. So two successes. Uh, it takes a while. Gainesville, again, is not very close. You're on foot. Uh, because umbral travel, again, is not one for one. It doesn't take as long as it would going on foot from Cape Canaveral to Gainesville. Uh, the issue is that there are a lot of dangerous spirits potentially that might cross your path. Um, so somebody, whoever, I guess, you know what, Cam, you haven't really rolled a whole lot. Uh, just give me yep. a, a single D10. Okay. There's a three. A three? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you all see a lot of spirits that, uh, they seem to be stalking you, uh, very hungry looking spirits, but you know, at least a couple of you are pretty experienced with umbral travel. Uh, you recognize them to be wild spirits, which are ostensibly allied with the Geru, uh, but they're still spirits. They still are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, and the wild is a spirit of like creation. Um, but that doesn't mean that it won't eat you, you know, if their spirits are hungry enough. 
Uh, but you all are able to navigate well enough that it doesn't seem like they're super interested. Uh, you kind of are able to take the right paths and lose them as you navigate your way to Gainesville uh, to the Sears. And I'm going to need another roll of Shadow Passage to cross back over. Okay. Oh, wait, but I can reduce the difficulty by one. Yep. Great. So that's nine dice again. Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> this is all my D10s. Okay. Two tens. That's a crit, Ooh, right? It is. So, that, so the way crits work in this, it goes from two successes to four successes. So you have four already. Great. And then I have a nine, a seven, and then a five, four, and two ones. So oh, you have two ones? Oh, is that a crit fail? It is. Oh, no. <laughs> they balance out? Yeah. Work? So, yeah, they, they will balance out in this case because you had that critical. Uh, so you still had two other successes. It's enough that uh, you're going to take another point of willpower damage. Uh -oh. How is Moonshine looking on willpower? I've got two. <laughs> we, should, we, we still got to get inside of NASA. Yeah. I'm like, oh no. But I'm still glad we came to, to see her. For <laughs> like, It'll Priority, be worth right? it. Yeah. Yeah. It already is. It's about the journey more than the, yeah. the destination, right? Oh, boy. <laughs> The real NASA is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell that to Gaia when, you know, <laughs> or Luna in this case, because uh, that's the target. RIP, I guess. Oh, I have a question for you, Rick. What does yes. Beep Boop look like in the Umbra? Does he have like any Ooh. different appearance, or does he manifest differently now that we're on like his side of the fence? Yeah, so that is a great question. Uh, I think because we did talk about him kind of possessing a moth at times, mm -hmm. uh, that when you cross over, uh, you all see that Winston, where, you know, he's got this uh, calculator watch, there is now a very large moth on his arm, like the size of a small dinner plate whenever it spreads out its wings. Uh, and I will let you decide what kind of moth. Oh, I'm I'm really gonna expose myself and my complete Yo, lack of, of moth variety. I try to shoot it off your arm. No, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Mr. Bell, hold, hold, hold. Um, oh. Okay, okay, my bad. No worries, no worries. Gang, this is beep boop. Beep boop, this is gang. Um, and in terms of uh um, I don't have the wherewithal to pull up a picture of a singular moth. So if anybody can think of just any variation of moth outside of moth, right now, I'll take it. Uh, you know what? Let's let's just call it a Luna moth because that's like Luna a, moth, a, kind of a almost neon green anyway. So very yeah. fitting with the vibes that I like to go for for the Umbra. And in its wings, there's like two kind of intricate places where it's uh, missing, where there is no skin or any like wing material. It looks like two crescent moons. Yeah, and uh, uh, also, we'll have him sparkle too, just because. Why not add yeah. the flavor? <laughs> and because this is a what's called a thinking engine spirit, uh, if you look very closely, like Winston, you could you could definitely spot this right away. But if anyone else looks closely at it, you can see kind of almost like the movie The Matrix, where you have the the lines of cascading numbers and things, but it's mm. all just ones and zeros. That are like ever shifting on its zero. body. I think I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> Rain is Neo. <laughs> yeah, that's the most beautiful thing Moonshine's maybe ever seen, and I think that might be part of the difficulty here. Is just like he can't focus. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's taking this willpower damage because he's just staring like, at this moth so hard. Yeah, Beep Boop loves it. Beep Boop has those two little like anime eye lines. <laughs> is Moonshine uh, reeling in any way from the uh, willpower damage that they've taken? So the the way that this would reflect uh, willpower is kind of like your mental energy, your emotional energy. So like 
you're kind of at that point where pretty soon you're going to be uh, like feeling a little bit overstimulated possibly by all of the people uh, where you're like about to, you know, if you lose more, you're going to probably lose consciousness. Um, the relatability of that sentence you just say, you right. just described like, <laughs> yeah. right. you, just described, <laughs> you just described my father walking into a mall in 1998. <laughs> just like the energy just. Whoo. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who walks into Walmart ever. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we Which did successfully get to... into like Umbra Sears. What does the Sears look like in the Umbra too? <laughs> so a lot of a lot of uh, especially newer buildings in the Umbra don't appear. Mm. Um, so it is still very swampy at this point. But things that are a little bit more well established uh, or that have a very high, not necessarily spiritual residence in like a religious sense, uh, but that would have a lot of energy that might resonate across into the umbra um so for example like let's say the empire state building right it's a little bit old has a lot of a lot of energy associated with it uh that would potentially appear in a slightly different form but it would still have a representation in the umbra right uh but we'd be looking more at like the concrete jungle kind of thing so you would see plants and creatures that aren't normally there in new york city florida it's there's a lot of gators for sure it's uh, like indistinguishable like, to switch over in terms of like the animal life and fauna <laughs> yeah i mean i have i have zero memory of this because uh we lived in florida until i was three but like my parents have told me that like we lived really close to the airport and uh people were having to go out on the runway to drag off alligators so that planes could take off and land so you know yeah totally fine everything's fine. i got one in animal can friends I <laughs> throw that out there. <laughs> if it ain't a moth i have like an okay chance is what i'm trying to say right that's that's how i get in i say that there's an alligator by the space shuttle and there i there it is <laughs> yes i'm here to collect the gator <laughs> oh yeah so maybe you didn't need to change your outfit after all because <laughs> there has like... to be a job gator collector i think you're out right yeah. on there Cam. yeah mm -hmm. oh my god yeah. so augustine is just steve Irwin, but a garu yes an american <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, i love this so much <laughs> So what what would you be stealing from here? Uh, sorry, uh, acquiring from the Sears. I know we were looking for clothes. Uh, was there anything else? Yes. <clears throat> I'm definitely getting like, uh, Winston definitely has like either like a blender or like a hand mixer or some <laughs> gadget <laughs> that like at the time, it's like really, really like mundane to us. But in 1969 right. had a little bit more zhuzh, was a little bit more like novel and exciting i can't think of an example but i'm just gonna say he gets like a what's considered then like state-of-the-art toaster uh gonna and he's gonna put that oven, yeah 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 he's gonna put it into his uh his oh. tattoo what kind of tattoo does he have um it, it's just uh i kind of like i i'm wondering if he would have the sense of humor to get like a little bag tattooed on him you know like it's a little a bag little, Oh, what do they call those? I don't know if there's a name for this, but there has to be. You know, in cartoons, like back in the day, like when somebody would like be on the move or was a nomad or didn't have a home. Oh, where the hobos had to stick it yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and with uh, oh, yeah. he is a uh, of that. And whenever he like puts something in that bag, kind of opens up and he's going to drop the toaster in. And he's offered this as a storage place to the, the rest of the group within reason. Because I think I still feel the weight of the thing, right? Yeah. I think so. That that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, just just a quick character question out of curiosity: Has Winston ever played D and D? Uh, it would be it... relatively new at this point. I think he would. If he hasn't, it's certainly something like on his radar. You know what? I think Winston right now 
is trying to evangelize and is trying to organize a group of guru back where he came from. <laughs> he's like, like really, really trying to like impress on them. He's like using references from like the fantasy novels and series that he knows that they have read. He's like really trying to individualize this the right. pitch. So he's giving these guru the hard pitch. He's resisting the urge. He's thinking like, I do want to ask these current people, but that feels like a post- Post mission kind of query. That's something yeah. I'll ask, you know, once we have but, you know, saved the moon. Those, slipping in those Lord of the Rings references when he can. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Amazing. I love that. Uh, especially because the Glasswalkers in our Detroit game, uh, they're totally playing WoW and like raiding dungeons in between mm, missions. So. I am their granddaddy. I'm your precursor. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Winston just moves to Detroit after this. And... Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I don't know how long Guru lived, but if Winston was a kindred, <laughs> just be in Detroit, indistinguishable from now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, so what kind of clothes would you all be helping Augustine pick out? Because I'm assuming that uh, they wouldn't have much of an opinion, but yeah. maybe I'm wrong. This is all relative, like, nonsense to me. This is kind of random, right? But I, like, yes. picked out one combination of clothes, and maybe that will work for you, Augustine, is you just buy the same outfit several times. Mm. Augustine, okay. what do you look like? <laughs> are, we, are, we all, are we all speaking, or are we waiting for Augustine? Um, I actually didn't think too much about what Augustine looks like. Um... Yeah, average height, kind of shaggy brown hair, um, but yellow eyes. That one thing that doesn't completely change. They might look kind of brown in the right light, but they're you know, <laughs> mm. keeping a little bit of the wolf there. Yeah, kind of yellowish eyes. Yeah, mm. he definitely looks like he lives in a swamp. Yeah. Okay. So Does maybe we go scientist anything? and not like government man. <laughs> Just like, you know, because scientists, they, it's okay if they don't cut their hair necessarily, you know. You would think that, Winston would say. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that would be the case. But no, apparently there are a lot of uh, opinions about how a professional with exaggerated air quotes would dress. Right? But <laughs> I empathize with Augustine here. I, I, I feel for you. So, so are we are we just dressing them up basically like a clone of Winston here? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be his suggestion. He's like tried and true. <laughs> so as as Rain is watching this and seeing this go on, he takes the same outfit. He doesn't make it obvious to anyone else, so he's right kind of in it, but he's looking at himself, kind of nodding to herself, like, that's a tie. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm we've also, got three bow ties. And I'm also secretly looking for any families taking pictures to hop in there. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I love that so much. The ultimate spy. I think the three of us have to, like, at some point, be like all looking at moonshine. We have right? to do the Spider-Man meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You you all point at each other like oh, the three of us. <laughs> yeah, so we have three bow ties at this point, and uh, as is later established in real life, bow ties are cool. So yeah, <laughs> I know that you enjoy this. Uh, the the hippie get up here that you got going on. I don't know why Winston is now Midwestern all of a sudden, here, <laughs> but I know that you like your clothes here. Uh, <laughs> He's um, practicing for when he moves to Detroit. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. But what if you? I mean, all of us are dressed the same. I feel like a sense of real cohesion and and pack loyalty and unity through this. Um, Moonshine's gonna like dig a fish around in a pocket and pull out a um, like a 
let's let's go Michigan, uh, Michigan State ID, <laughs> and it's gonna be like. I'm not going to do the whole improv, but it's going to be like a whole person with like his picture, but like the hair is like down. Like it is a, it is a 21 year old woman's official state ID mm. <laughs> and be like, Oh, don't worry. I got a backpack. I can look just like this. It's crazy. <laughs> going to take a look at that. Like fascinating. This is awesome. Yeah. I just shrug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, when you when you pretend to be a secretary, nobody sees you. You're like not even there. Just just out of curiosity, can we say that uh since it's a Michigan ID that the address is in uh Gratiot and Kettering, which is where where our Detroit uh sept is located? <laughs> Absolutely. We need to write something into a wall, carve some of this <laughs> that. Let's change the future game. <laughs> yes. Moonshine was here. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Amazing. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you, so you have a, a change of clothes then that you're prepared to uh, be the only one who's not in the bow tie gang. Yeah, I could not. I'm, I'm sorry. I think it looks so excellent on all of you, but it would make me so itchy. I would not be able to focus. Fair enough. I think we <laughs> do definitely need to get some pulling in the tie a little bit. Getting used <laughs> yeah. To it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you look fine, Augustine. I, I do have to insist upon photographs of the three of us, given that we are all wearing the identical outfit. And I want us to do like the '90s, like back to back. I <laughs> love the idea that, like, you know, we kind of talked to Ethereus about this being, like, potentially your all's first mission together. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, eventually this is ideally, like, a, an elite strike team. That this is, like, the Garou version of SEAL Team 6. But yep. because this is your first mission, you're all like, no, we gotta we gotta take a selfie. Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> all the things that you shouldn't do as a spy. 100%. <laughs> Let's what do if all. we just documented and had like physical <laughs> evidence of our yeah, presence this is that here? Montage yeah. in the spy movie right before they get down to business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Amazing. I yeah. So, uh, if you're all satisfied with your uh, purchases, then uh, I will have Moonshine give me another roll to cross back over, and hopefully, <laughs> you roll better. <laughs> oh, can I give Moonshine like the rocky shoulder rub? I don't know if that, if, if, if that movie even exists, but I'm going to use it as a anachronistic point of reference for us. I don't remember when it came out. Kind of thing. I feel it. like it had to be after 1969, but I could be wrong. Let's see. I think it's what the late 70s. We went 76. Series, oh, 76. Can I buy? Can I, buy um, I want to also purchase some bed sheets to take okay. on the mission. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can put those yeah. in my my arm. <laughs> I'm just like leaning a little bit on like the collective weight of everything. <laughs> just like dragging this arm on the floor, just like making, you know, trying yeah. to look what is what is here. Winston's strength like? Uh Winston's strength is a two, a respectable okay. two. Yeah. Yeah, that's decent. You know? Yeah. Like he's gonna be tired eventually from carrying all this stuff around, but mm -hmm. for now he's good. Yeah, the, I think the adrenaline of just like being here, being on a mission. The, I like to think that he has had not, <laughs> we will say like the werewolf equivalent of like a, a clerical ish career up until this point. <laughs> He's been pushing the, the, the Giru papers. And so this is his first real taste of the, the actual, like, oh you know, God. metaphorical and literal moonlight. He's, he's here for both. <laughs> love it. I love, oh, I it. love it so much. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh man, that's two ones again. Oh no. <laughs> no. Uh, so there's that. And then there's a 10, a nine, a six, and then five, two fours, a three, and two ones. Okay. Silver lining, you're consistent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it'd be nice if you got that crit again. Uh, it wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you only had, uh, well, you had, you had met, like you had the three successes, right? That was what I had established. 
would be you know the, the kind of baseline to cross over at most places so you you succeeded with that but because of the uh brutal failure you are going to increase in rage which is good in some ways uh but also you immediately shift into hispo Oops. so you're not you're not like full on uh war form or anything but you know you you start to wolf out a little bit you got a little bit you know whatever that looks like for moonshine but a little bit hairier a little bit uh more bestial uh wait hispo hispo's the dire wolf form right or sorry not hispo uh glabro sorry glabro okay um got it okay um that's fine. Do so, but I don't. Do I hit? Do I take another hit to my willpower? Or is that okay? Uh, yeah, you will take one more. Oh boy. But you know, I mean, you're you're still there. I would like to point out, didn't we come to Florida a few days before the launch? Would it be uh, possible said, for us to rest up moonshine at all before the well, the mission? So here's the thing. Uh, number one, you gotta still get back to Cape Canaveral. Uh. Number two, who knows? Uh, none of you checked, like, what time or date it was whenever you got there. Uh, so who knows how long you were in the Umbra. I do. I'm going to check my watch. I mean, would it? I guess some watches do have the date on there, right? Well, I mean, I think we would be. Would, would we not be? Well, no, because we got back. Shit. Would it be? Well, so would it be night when we got back or day? Well, actually, so the, the issue here would be uh, even if your watch had the date on there, because it would be relative to you. Mm. Yeah. So it would right. still register the same amount of time, like no matter how long it had been. Um, Can we see if there's anyone around with a newspaper? So when we're outside, do we notice that there has been a time difference, or is it like the same time of day? And we would would it be reasonable for us to assume it's the same day? I mean, if you're all going straight into the Sears, which was kind of the way it was described to me, mm -hmm. then you probably wouldn't really notice if you're going so straight from from the interior of the motel to the interior of Sears. Is it open or closed? So is there are there people walking around? Yeah, there's people walking around. So I think I would assume, like, how much time passed in the Umbra is how much time passed. Like, and I would look at my watch and that would confirm it. So I think I would think nothing of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, our, our Umbral travelers would know that's a possibility. Okay, um, yeah, I'm not. So, yeah, I would yeah. just be like, all right, this is cool. Oh, man. But, I also, don't... but also, you know that, like, unless you spent a extended period of time there like you wouldn't have missed the launch yet hmm. yeah I, I i'm not sure that moonshine ever really realizes how much <laughs> time passes just in general <laughs> That's real. doesn't register like what days are necessarily no sometimes it's daytime sometimes it's night team i would like <laughs> to suggest that we dedicate some time to maybe a short analysis of our good friend moonshine <laughs> and their mental <laughs> capacities and where it's all at this time, they appear to be mentally exhausted and don't seem to care like a real strong self-awareness about it. So I think on behalf of them, maybe do we <laughs> out of character, do we have any help like objectively out of that? We don't know the characters don't know. Do we have how far are we out from the launch? If we got there, tried to get there a day or two before. Earlier? Yeah. Like, so, we don't even I mean, know what the current time is looking like for real. For real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we, we I, I think, I think it's like maybe what, five minutes from when we started on the other side? <laughs> and we're, we're inside and people are walking around. So we can't tell if it's, you know what I mean, night or day. I mean, it would have yeah. been, I'd say, a couple of hours at least travel in the Umbra. So you would know that there would be a, le a little bit of time, but, you know, not a ton. But yeah, like you said, there's no reason for you to think about like oh this could have been longer than we thought you know again like moonshine and winston might know that that's a possibility but you know moonshine probably wouldn't think about it since mm. days are kind of irrelevant winston might yeah because there is there something that i could roll to look for any kind of 
tidbits of like information. Um, well, I'm pretty sure Sears would actually have clocks on their walls at that time. They always had the uh, face clocks. That's true. I mean, that would give you the time, the physical time. Uh, you know what? I will, I will let you roll wisdom and occult if you want to ask beep boop. Okay. Oh yeah, beep boop. Beep boop. <laughs> you. You're a clock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is but one of the many features that beep boop has. Um. So I am going to be rolling four dice if it's wisdom plus the cult, and then the right two will be the rage dice. Let's roll that. And how many actually? How many dots did you have in your uh, spirit pact? Uh, I can tell you four. Yeah, add that. Oh, okay, perfect. So that would be. I eight. mean, you, you took that background for a reason, so. It's a very good point. I didn't think about how to crime with my other skills. <laughs> okay, hold on. So weirdly on this website that I am on, like rolling eight D tens is not an option, so I gotta go in oh. and change it. I just I just you, speak you, it into you, Google. Yeah. Google with its dice rollers, I mean you can just do a shit ton. Okay. Um, I was using my D&D Beyond sheet, one of my character sheets. There you go. <laughs> so the right two are a 10 and a 2. Uh, okay. And then there's a 4, a 3, a 7, a 2, a 3, and a 7. Okay, so three successes. Mm -hmm. I mean, out of eight's not amazing, but, you know, three successes is good enough here. Uh, beep boop. Uh, what, what do you ask specifically? Uh... <clears throat> Beep boop. Um, and I'm gonna give him like some 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 moth love. I like to think that he's we have like a dog esque relationship. <laughs> um, can you show me? Tell me how long it's been since we we left. How much time has passed? What time and day is it? Yeah. So on this little moth's forehead, uh, it looks just like the display on your calculator watch. Mm -hmm. uh, it says current time and date. It says July 16th, 8.45 a.m. I will let you all know uh, because not everybody knows out of character. Uh, Apollo 11 lifted off at approximately 9.32 a.m. July 16th. Oh, wow. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, God, team. A considerable amount of time has passed. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. He's going to start just, like, pacing. He's freaking out. Um, oh, good. oh, God. It's time to get back. Wait. Oh, no. I'm not aware yet. Nobody's told me. I'm still. I, I, I think I think Winston freaking out would probably include some some exposition of, like, hey. Uh, it's fucking got, 845 like, right now. Yeah, we've got, like. Oh, it's a pineapple situation. Oh, no, that's yeah. Oh, oh, God, pineapple. We've got, like, <laughs> 47 minutes. <laughs> um, I hate to okay. alarm everybody, but the launch is in less less than an hour. How far, how far are we from the launch right now? Well, you're in Gainesville. Um. Which is which is a different city altogether. I think we gotta go straight to the moon, guys. Hmm. <clears throat> we bypass the. <laughs> I mean, I'm not against that plan. I think I would need more information and specification <laughs> as to the right. means through which we would get to the moon. But on its face, it sounds Can interesting. Tell us more. Like, what do I need to bring to the moon? <laughs> the food tastes good there. I don't. Um, I mean, at this point, I think I think that uh, if we go to the moon, we don't have like equipment to survive <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> so about that, I don't uh, know much about like how oxygen and th well, oxygen and things work because Sean. I'm a wolf, but still, <laughs> we may have lost Sean. Um, yeah, so I will say, you all would know uh, you do have a way to get into NASA. Uh, the possibility of like stealing spacesuit may be a little bit tricky uh it may be something to to figure out but it's not impossible um you could potentially do it because you have a way to get in but first we have to get back to the right city right right okay 
Okay. That is a, a slight issue. Small, tiny issue. Um, oh, oh, y'all, I'm so sorry. I blew this. Just go into the store. Boonshine, never apologize. You're an absolute king. This isn't about that. <laughs> um, mm. I like to think that the uh, the light on Beep Boop and his, his like calculator form is freaking out as well. <laughs> it's like, going yeah. on and off really okay. rapidly. Yeah. Okay. So I just, but I did roll to go back into the Umbra. That right. was okay. Um, but we are in my hometown. So yep. you had mentioned earlier that if we were going to try to use the Umbra to go to the moon, we would need some help. You sure would. Do I have mm. like friends in town? Uh. Absolutely. Ah, uh, there we go. Hey. 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 So I just uh, just did a quick Google. Uh, so Gainesville by vehicle is two and a half hours. It's 165 miles. Uh, walking, according to Google Maps, three days. If we change into wolves, how fast would we get there? Not a whole lot faster. <laughs> I mean, at least on physical land. Uh, the umbral travelers, uh, especially <clears throat> would know that there are ways to sometimes take shortcuts. They're risky, but it's a possibility. But you also know uh, you are very, very close to unconsciousness as far as your willpower goes. You would know that you are fading fast. And uh, you wouldn't die in the umbra like immediately from maxing out. Uh, but so there's that, <laughs> but you would be unconscious, and then your allies would have to number one, uh, get you to where you're going successfully, number two, um, to keep you from, from dying at that point. Like, if you take any more willpower damage, yeah. you would die. Uh, and then they also have to cross over without the person who has helped them cross every time thus far. Oh, yeah, Augustine, like, yeah. Can you drive the bus now? <laughs> I can try, yeah. Thank you. Do, does Augustine know what a bus is? No, I, <laughs> I think Augustine has seen buses. Because because one thing that we did talk about uh, for wolves reaching maturity, they're they're you know about a year or two old. So realistically, even though Augustine appears to be an adult human, uh, they're physically only maybe two i think it took a while to get from montana to to florida so that, <laughs> that's you know true. a little bit that's true that. and i've seen <laughs> buses along the way <laughs> driving is a whole other concept but <laughs> can understand a bus more of a metaphorical bus <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> is there any way for when we while we are still in Gainesville for moonshine to leverage any like existing familial or friend or like pack or sept connections absolutely would being home heal their soul like how can we make them less uh, hey, are there any, oh sorry my bad go ahead no no worries are there any important people I could, like could that are making phone calls around this time the only issue is you all did cross into the Umbra. Now, you right. because, as you said, uh, you are in your hometown. The Umbra is a little bit kind of like people explain the Feywild in D&D to be, where things are ever-shifting. <clears throat> it's not always exactly the same. You can't always follow the exact same paths. But because this is your old stomping grounds, you would know more or less how to get to places that you've been before. Uh, you might even potentially be able to see because... If you are an experienced Dumbo traveler, it's not too much of a stretch to say other people in your sept might be as well. Uh, so you might be able to see, say, like silvery footprints of familiar Garu. Um. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I could maybe introduce you to some of my friends. Okay. Could they help me though? <laughs> Do like. I mean, you, you have some points and contacts as well, don't you? Or allies, one of the two? No? No, I chose adversary. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> so we can visit my nemesis, but I don't know if that would be. 
maybe later. I don't know if we have time. <laughs> yeah, that's another after mission kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I don't have any like in my like stats. I don't have anybody right. who I can call necessarily. What you could do uh, is you could get to one of their homes, mm -hmm. uh, or you know, probably somewhere someone in your sept would have a actual physical home because not all Garu live uh, the way that humans do. Not all of them, you know, live that suburban kind of like white picket fence, American dream thing. Some of them are a little bit more living out. Bit, well, some of them are Augustine. Let's just say <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a fair number of them actually. And so I think you would at least have a couple of them who would have phones. And then you could reach out to Augustine's contacts or Rain's contacts, potentially. Oh, yeah. Would y'all want to go uh, visit one of my friend's houses with a telephone? Ooh, yeah, sure. Telephone. Okay, because this store is too bright. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I already did my role, right, to get us into the Umbra. Yep. Great. And uh, I'm so looking for footprints. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, what did I say last time? I think it was intelligence and survival or occult, whichever's better. Yeah. Um, great, so that's four dice. All right, that's an eight and a nine, so two successes. Okay. Oh, wait, yeah, eight and a nine. Uh, you are able to successfully find some silvery footprints. In fact, you find a stone in the Umbra, uh, which you would know to be a moonstone. <gasps> it has a paw print on it. And that is something that can connect to what's called a moon bridge, which is not a physical bridge, but it is a path, a safe path to a cairn. <laughs> Moonshine, are you all right? Is everything okay? Oh yeah, look at this! And I show Luna <laughs> the stone. You show Luna? Yeah. Like you're holding it up to the moon? Yeah, basically. Yeah, that makes sense. I just want to. She makes me feel very grounded right now. Yeah. From um, from here, she looks, she I'm just like look looking at you like, hold a rock, like. I don't, <laughs> Like you, you can't physically see the moon from where you are, but you know that she's up there. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. I mean beep boop. I mean beep oh, boop. The okay. oh. <laughs> oh yeah, beep boop is gonna like fly around <laughs> and like he's gonna be all over it actually, like analyzing it. Like what is this? <laughs> yeah. I'm um, still I'm still a little freaked out by beep boop's new form because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the matrix numbers is such a good visual of like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Not it just makes deep. perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times weaver spirits are more spidery, uh, like the main thing, because, you know, the weaver is like essentially a giant spider. Um, because their their main spirit that uh, most often appears is called a pattern spider. And it's just like weaving threads throughout everything. Um, but I really like this. Uh, the The... Moth is a cool image, uh, as some other kind of weaver spirit. Um, but yeah, you are able to make your way to what you would know to be your cairn. And so you are able to cross over very easily. I'm not even going to make you roll, because this is a place that the gauntlet is much thinner. And so you are able to cross over. What would Moonshine's cairn be? It would typically, for most Garu, uh, unless like Glasswalkers are a little bit more uh, usually technologically minded than other Garu, uh, but it's usually some kind of like spiritually significant, uh, usually more natural location. Yeah. Um, great. I think you. I just want to say beforehand, part of the uh, Umbral Traveler thing is I have web music, which means. Mm. Uh, when pattern spider webs are present, I can draw the attention of any single pattern spider. Very um, cool. So I don't know, if, but but I think that that might be why 
uh, beep boop is so fascinating because they don't usually <laughs> look like that. But right. my cairn, I have so much trouble imagining anything except for like a basement with like black light posters for <laughs> it's just like it's, it's so foggy. But it's so like <laughs> I think probably what it more likely is is like like a like a a like a like a broken down farmhouse on like land that got like settled and abandoned because you just can't grow anything on it right um and so it's just like a very kind of like creaky breezy shitty house that's full of like bead curtains and patchouli <laughs> miscreants miscreants <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that left hand cigarette smoke yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and when you say like you can't grow anything there, it's more that like humans couldn't grow crops there, but right. the wildlife and the the like native plants flourish. Yes, and that's a great point. Yeah, like it's not yeah. it's not good. It's not subduable land. Like it's doing exactly its own thing. cannot be tamed. Yeah. Other than you know you have this house with black light posters and a basement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't think there's a basement, I, or we we gave it back to nature. I think that basement is <laughs> wet. It used to have black light posters. <laughs> yeah. At one point in time. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, the the posters are just uh, on the upper floors now. Um. Okay. Yeah. W welcome to my house. I did not think we was gonna come back here today. <laughs> It's very uh, distinct looking. You have, you have any food? Oh, are you hungry, Mr. Bo? Yeah, I'm sure we got something. Uh, let's see. Um, there. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking of like college junk food from the '90s. Like it's not it's not <laughs> yeah. ramen packets, but it's like oh moon pies, moon pies. Oh, for sure. It's moon pies. Yeah. Is this like uh, are we within the confines of like reefer madness right now in 1969? Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Got it. I'm trying to visualize this in my head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is the like height of weed is dope and it's like a gateway drug that's gonna make you go straight to hell and commit murder <laughs> mm -hmm. um i think moonshine usually when he comes home he just starts like calling out like assuming that like everyone wants to hear him when he comes home that's like because it's like unclear who's ever going to be home right um i brought some friends and i don't feel too good Yeah. Uh, so you you hear you hear <laughs> some voices calling from another room. They're like, "Moonshine, what are you oh, doing hey. home?" Yeah, I had a bad trip through the Umbra. I've uh, been there, been there, brother. Yeah, but this is Augustine and Mr. Bo and Winston. I'm Winston. And we're supposed to be in Cape Canaveral, but except I took us to Sears. <laughs> And if we don't hurry, we're going to miss the space launch and we uh, need to be there. I don't know. I'm trying to, like, fill me in, like, politically. <laughs> like, if this was Vampire the Masquerade, like, I would be hesitant in discussing, like, clan business in front of, like, a oh, different no. clan or in a different space. But this, so, the, okay. I mean, there there are some tribes that are antagonistic, but, I mean, you can definitely assume that... Uh, Moonshine is not a black spiral dancer or a get a Fenris or definitely not a stargazer. Maybe literally a stargazer, but not of that tribe. Right, right. Got it. Okay. So yeah, we have uh, very important things that each of us is supposed to be doing uh, at the at the launch, but I, I do want to prioritize Moonshine's health here. He's, uh, he's taken a lot, falling on a lot of swords for the team today. <laughs> Yeah, but doesn't everybody look so nice? Do you have the jerky? Uh, I mean, yeah, we got a little bit left. Okay. I'm just going to go, like, really. In, in It's not rude for the people present, but just demolish some jerky in a way that's, like, 
unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> like a wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, uh, just for, for, you know, reference politically, uh, 1969, January, Richard Nixon was inaugurated as president. So we are in the Nixon years. And nothing bad is going to happen at all. <laughs> Never. Not once. Not even not, once. Uh, no how. Not even, you know, five years from now. Not under President Nixon. He's so trustworthy. <laughs> yeah, I see moonshine eat the, eat the jerky. And as a guru, I like, I know what it is and I know why, but I still, like, it's still just like, <laughs> I'm not, not disgusting, but it just weirds me out. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so can, in terms of like, what, how can, how can we get help here? Yeah, so this would be where we would reach out to contacts. So, okay. yeah, I mean, we, we have used Rain's contact. Uh, Rain, you would know you could potentially call again, uh, given the nature of your dealings. Uh, it may be poorly received if um, their potential capturees were not to be on site and possibly not going to come at all. So that may be something that would be problematic if you were to call and mention like, hey, we're not in Cape Canaveral and we're like a couple hours away actually. So that may not be the best to call them. Just just hey, my, my thoughts. Anybody want to call? Anybody? Anybody phone a friend? <laughs> Rain invented that phrase. <laughs> I don't think I know a single phone number. What were you saying, Cam? Are, so, would it be possible if Augustine called some of their contacts at the preserve to be like, can you delay the launch because of some environmental something? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> make up an environmental that emergency. That is to give us like an extra ten the, minutes. That is one of the things you were specifically told cannot happen. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, while technically you probably could, uh, it would be very problematic. No. It would be like serious punishment okay. whenever you get back. I right. that this is all for a Sears run. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. <laughs> we have we all look amazing. <laughs> I never played this game before. I don't know if uh, <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> no, that's it's, okay. it's not something that always happens. It's uh, more like we're at two hours, and uh, I wanted to, you know, move things along and escalate a little bit. And great. Not that there's Is a there... oh, I it, but if you know. I run out, how about this? If I shapeshift and run out. To this uh, area, do you think that I can draw some people away so that you guys can get in? The problem is that we're in another city right now. We got to get there. Yeah, walking for a human would take three days. Now, a wolf can go a lot faster, but it would still take a significant amount of time. But if well, we I get, agree well, with Moonshine about their idea of going to the moon. I think that that's brilliant. But also, I would raise what Augustine Rose, which is once we get there, uh, I don't think there's a lot of oxygen up there. So, is there anything that anybody think of that might make that slightly more inhabitable or less unpleasant for us while we're up there? No. No. Space I think our best bet is to try and get back to the next <clears throat> site and do something from there. What is Whispered Passage? Mm, great question. That's one of your gifts, right? Yeah. I believe that's going to let you do some sneaky stuff, but let me double check because I don't remember off the top of my head. Maybe Augustine opens up a Umbra path back to where we need to go, and we all absolutely just book it once we're in the Umbra. Yeah. Just like run as oh, yeah. Like, as I said, possible. like I said, shortcuts are a possibility. Um, that is definitely something that you could do. Let me just find this gift real quick. Oh, it's uh, okay. I got it here. 
Oh, perfect. Everything seems to fall silent around the werewolf using this gift as their movements become completely silent and yeah. other noises. Yeah, cat spirit. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. It costs one willpower. I so, granted, it seems some kind of passage, but it does not. So there is something you could potentially do here. Um, you could, uh, in order to regain your willpower, um, I believe it's your Hirano that you could voluntarily check a box and regain. Um, the only issue is, is you know, that risks like falling to essentially depression where you kind of give up on Gaia altogether and just oh. say like the apocalypse is going to happen and I just fuck it. Don't care. Okay. And how would that work? <laughs> uh, so you would just check a box of, I, like I said, I believe it's Oh, wrong. to restore all willpower damage. Mm-hmm. Which represents them summoning up a merciless resolve to keep going. Everyone else be damned. Um, yeah, yeah, so great. It, it is, it is, you know, a thing you can do. It's not great, and I mean, one point in it is not the end of the world. Uh, but you know, you can only take so many points before you are going to then be an NPC. Oh boy, uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that is the way it, they describe it. <laughs> that's fantastic. I think. You know, Moonshine, it's it's really not clear to me, like, how Moonshine got on this mission, but he did. <laughs> and I don't think he's ever been, like, asked to do anything that was, like, serious and had consequences before. And, like, is really learning the hard way um, about that. So I think, yeah, we're going to take a, take a box of Haoglosk and... It's that jerky, though. The jerky, like, Moonshine <laughs> takes a bite of jerky and is like, all right, y'all, we got to get down to business. We got to get back to Cape Canaveral now. So who's ready to go through the spooky land again and go to space? Yeah, let's, let's do it. And right. theoretically, theoretically, uh, I mean, coming from your cairn, you did just use a moon bridge to get here. Those also speed up travel. Uh, if you can successfully... There wouldn't be necessarily a moon bridge, uh, but if you can take some shortcuts, it is possible you could get there a lot faster than mm -hmm. you got to the Sears. Great. Um, I'm going to go. Great. Is there a map of Florida in this house? Probably, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Just, so, just since to we have. did you know, establish with no GPS, like, yeah, probably. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to walk over to whoever just gave me the jerky and just give them like a like big fat kiss on the mouth <laughs> and be like, can I go in your glove compartment and take out the map? Oh, no, it's it's right over there. It's on the table. Oh, okay. Look at us studying. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Um, and hold, like with like a finger on Cape Canaveral, um, I'm gonna do Shadow Passage and get us back home. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Not to NASA, home to NASA. Right. I knew it's okay. Meant. Great. Your new home, <laughs> Augustine. I'm still driving the bus, baby. I got this. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to help to like guide towards the wildlife refuge that the space center is in? Because I know it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll allow that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So go ahead and do your, your shadow passage because that's our first task. Great. Um, golly Moses. Okay, no ones. We've got <laughs> uh, 10, ooh, 10, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8. So six mm. successes. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That jerky. You know <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think with this shadow passage, uh, when you cross over, you recognize that there is a wolf trail. No paw prints, but you can tell that other wolves have been this way. Uh, and so I'm going to have either one of you, either Augustine or Moonshine, uh, can roll me the 
intelligence survival or intelligence occult. Um, and then whoever's rolling, you're going to get two bonus die. Go for it, Augustine. So intelligence, survival, and two more? Yep. So that's seven die. Nice. Uh, okay. I also pulled a green charm when they changed and, and, and pulled that switcheroo. <laughs> I love going to Sears was the best decision this party made. <laughs> That's so funny. Because it's so like we ever so relatable. Everybody's needed to go buy like a thing and it's wasted like four days. Yeah. Yep. I so mean we kind of we made that I, a thing. We were pioneers. I mean, really, it was only like a day and a half, but you know. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. It's ADHD every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that the idea of the umbra being neurodivergent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay. All right. I got uh do you see ten, nine, two sixes, seven, five, and a three. Okay. Uh the, I, I don't know how that is. Everything six and above. I lost track. I was counting and then I lost track. Okay. So that's two sixes, a seven, a nine, and a ten. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh yeah, you all are able to follow this wolf trail all the way to this nature preserve. Uh, you will still need to cross over, so I'm going to have that roll real quick. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh. And we're in the uh, embers, though? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got two ones, but... Otherwise, it's one, two, three, four, five successes. Okay. Were they on your rage dice? No. Okay. That is the key difference. Uh, yeah. So you are able to cross over pretty easily. Uh, and because you rolled very well, Augustine, um, mm -hmm. you see a familiar park ranger not very far away from you. Uh, you seemingly kind of knew how to navigate to them, even though you couldn't see them from the Umbra. Steve! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know that they're kind of odd. You're not sure what about them is uh, off, but you don't think they're human fully. <sighs> All right, cool. Do they have a knife? Is what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. They're not Australian. Right. <laughs> but they do have a knife, yes, absolutely. <laughs> do I have to, I need to I'm still in Globro. I need to change back to human form. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. But you Is could have you could have easily done that like while oh, okay. you were at home. Yeah. Great. Um to approach this ranger and ask. At first I'm gonna ask what time is it? Uh, you look at the time. It is nearly launch time. You have a few minutes. And you know at this point, mm -hmm. there's probably not a whole lot you can do to actually physically right now get to where you need to go and stop it because it's going to take some time to get there. Uh, the astronauts are already in the shuttle at this point. It You can see being a few minutes away, there is smoke billowing from the uh, the booster, you know, that it is attached to. You can see the countdown clock has minutes left. You can see that there are people thronging all around. There are, you know, people with, uh, like, news cameras and all sorts of, you know, just hubbub going on uh, very, very nearby. There's not really a possibility you could get to that. There's really one option at this point. Okay. So we have to get spacesuits. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, I will say one nice thing for you all. Uh, it takes four days to get to the moon. Hell yeah. Oh. You got some time now. Okay, on a technicality. <laughs> that's what I like to say. <laughs> Look at me doing my research. <laughs> well, yeah, that's definitely... I got some larceny. I think I have three in larceny. <laughs> 
and foreign yeah, we still. You can't go in that uh, umbra no more. Well, you're going to have to to get to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save the, the umber channel or the travel for like our, our journey to the moon because we have been there a lot. But yeah, I will definitely, if we can get into the NASA building, I could definitely stealth and steal some, some shiz. Yeah. And uh, Rain, I think that you were probably given uh, information like in that call of a contact like once you go to check in. Uh, and so you were told to ask for James. James. And that's how you're going to get your passes essentially to get in. And realistically, the chances that they would have like noticed, hey, these four assholes haven't shown up and like gotten these passes, they're they're focused on the launch, right? They're not paying attention to did they show up? Are we now gonna do this thing? They're more waiting for like people to try to leave mm -hmm. to catch them then. So realistically, you could probably still get in pretty easily. So, uh, Augustine, you know yeah. that this is Steve. Uh, we're just, we're going to go with it. I'm, I'm rolling with it. <laughs> like it. Uh, and Steve just is like, Augustine, where'd you come from? Work. It, why, why are you dressed like that? You're not in your uniform. I had a meeting. When did they start inviting you to meetings? Today. Oh, okay. Well, what a, what a day to do it, I guess. Is there something I can help you with? You look like... Uh... I don't know where the meeting is. Oh, you, <laughs> you got to get to the oh, meeting. Oh. This way. He knows where the meeting is. Okay. <laughs> so, being uh, a contact... Steve may not know. I mean, I, that, I'll leave it up to you. Does Steve know that you're a Garu? Sorry, could you repeat that? I can't unplug the headphones. Oh. <laughs> Freaking cats. Uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it up to you. Does Steve know that you're a Garu? Um. Not all, not all humans will go into delirium. Uh, and also, potentially, like, after delirium, they could be, like, reasoned with and explained that hey this is a thing that exists so mm -hmm. it's possible that you know he may not have just lost his shit altogether kindred could just like his wounds fog his mind just saying throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. but also but also you have some suspicions that he's not human already you, you know that yeah. he's not garu but you have some suspicions that he's not quite human it smells a little off <laughs> yeah it smells kind of swampy. Can I smell Steve? Am I close Sorry. enough? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can you can definitely smell. Um, I don't think anybody took the enhanced senses. Which, you know, it's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you think? Does does Steve know that you're a werewolf? Um sure, why not? <laughs> It'd be fun. Okay. Uh, Steve's just like, okay, Augustine, we don't we don't have to lie. You don't go to the meetings. Remember, there was that one time they said no more meetings for Augustine. Yeah, I know. Now, you you know you can trust me. Are uh, are they you know these friends of yours? Uh, are they friendly friends? If you know what I mean. I'm gonna sniff Steve. <laughs> <laughs> They're friends, yeah, and we we need to get inside. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, love a Garu. Yeah, love to see it. Didn't know there were that many of you here, but yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know you had that many friends either, but hey, good for you. Good for you getting out there. I mean, I think I could, I think I could get you through the crowd. Thank you. Now. What do you what do you need to get in there for in the first place? You know, it's uh, not really our 
not really our, our job description to go into the space center or anything. We need to look around. Uh, um... Reason. <laughs> <laughs> what is a good reason? Uh... I mean, he knows that you're Garu. Mm hmm. So reasonably, uh, he may know other stuff potentially. Yeah. Would he be offended if you said this is just this is Garu stuff? I don't feel comfortable yeah. discussing it with a non Garu. Yeah, it's Garu. Yeah, I mean, work, but... does Winston <laughs> say that? I'd like to think we're like a. <laughs> Winston did the like, can we? Can we huddle yeah. over a Sidebar, real quick. <laughs> First of all, Steve smells very weird. I I don't know what's going on there. But Steve's always that. smelled like that. Yeah, but... I don't know what that is. I feel yeah. like it'd be rude to ask him. But what do we think in Augustine? What do you what do, what do you think? I, th I mean, I've trusted Steve. I think I mean Steve knows, you know, knows stuff, but knows I'm a Garu. So I think Steve can help. I just don't know how much we want to tell. I'm going to look outside of the huddle at Steve and then look back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he seems fine to me. He's fine. I think he'll help us get inside. Uh, yeah. Mr. Bow is very important, and it's very important that he get inside mm -hmm. very quickly. So Steve was uh, was definitely listening. To the sidebar since there wasn't like a whole lot. I, I rolled just to see, you know, how well he was listening. Yeah, he 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 definitely heard. And he's just like, okay. I'm sure, Augustine, you you know I'm not, you know, one of them. And he like kind of points his head towards all the, the people, the humans. It's I don't want to say it's obvious, but you know. Okay. Now let me just preface this by saying my people don't always get along with the Garu very well. Uh, I'm what you might call a Macaulay. Some might call us a Werecroc, but, I, you know. I get along mm. great with the crocodiles in the Everglades. Yeah, I think that's why we're such good friends. Well, yeah. acquaintances, but yeah. Yeah. We have an out of character, maybe Steve wear crocs on to wait. No, it's already been <laughs> That's right where my mind was. So was like, maybe Steve the croc that has to be removed from the tournament. <laughs> Steve, can you help us out? <laughs> you got to take one for the team, Steve. Yeah. The uh, crocodile got into the space station. So from <laughs> one wear thing to another. Bro. I mean, he did, he did say that he could get you in. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. He's just like, okay. And you see that this human man, I'm going to say that he's kind of a, a, you know, slightly overweight, middle-aged dude. And uh, you see that he goes from this park ranger whose clothes are, you know, maybe a little bit tightly fitting um, to, you see, he starts to shift and grow these scales and goes down on all fours and this hulking, the biggest gator you have ever seen just absolutely starts booking it right at the crowd. And you see people run screaming and panicking, not delirium screaming and panicking because this is just a gator. This is just Florida, uh, yeah. but they're freaking out. So you now have a clear shot to get into NASA. Let's do it. Just run, just run it. Don't worry, I'm a park Thank ranger. You, Steve. <laughs> oh my gosh. You could have kept your park ranger uniform on the whole time. I had a meeting. <laughs> we didn't even need to go. No, you know what? The Sears trip was part of the structural integrity of this mission, and I will not hear anything otherwise. We needed that Sears trip. Yes. Yeah. Go. It was important. It was important. It was. That was the bond, the unbreakable bond that our, <laughs> our pack now has. Mm -hmm. You all committed. Bond is in the bow tie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you all committed one act of larceny together. You're about to commit a bigger, probably like a felony larceny. Maybe at this grand point. larceny? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'm only good in larceny, not felony. I don't know. How <laughs> I think I've got three in larceny, stealing... so I'm like, let's let's fucking <clears throat> crime. Let's crime. Yeah, it up. I think I think stealing like the whole spacesuit probably qualifies as a federal crime. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I don't know that anybody's ever tried it. There's probably some weird. I think you're right. There's probably some weird bylaw about that, <laughs> like with it being something. Yeah. I worked yeah. for the government before, and there, if you think that there is a weird policy for something, there almost certainly somewhere <laughs> in some subsection is. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. So uh, you are able to get to the building, uh, to the actual space center itself. Uh, you, Rain, ask for James. You're given some passes. Uh, they do say press on them. So you know that they won't get you into the places that you need to go so you'll have to do some stuff you'll have to do some uh some fuckery to get there the but... front door, though. Mm -hmm. sure does and uh because right now the shuttle is launching like it was only a few minutes you had a few minutes of conversation so you all are, are running up into this building while everyone else other than the ones screaming and panicking and running uh, everyone else <laughs> is focused on this is the mission to the moon right they're all watching that not paying any attention to these four people running in and pretty much everybody inside seems to be just holding their breath waiting to see what happens and so like you're you're able to get in but everyone seems pretty preoccupied at this point thank you steve <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's hope that let's hope Steve doesn't get Florida because I think that like being in Gator in Florida is like a very dangerous kind of precarious existence <laughs> I imagine so I think Steve, Steve gets out of this. I think, I think he'll be okay. He's been around for a while I got faith in Steve Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean thankfully you know, he can always right. shift back you know he, he could yeah. just be a big man at that point Um, <laughs> Like I would think at this point especially because this predates so many of like the modern security measures and structures that would render this kind of impossible in modern day but i definitely think that winston's first like instinct would be to try to attempt some kind of other badge or to get to like is there like a security desk or office or something maybe with like low attendance or he would his mind would go there the, yeah. like, getting so a, an actual key perhaps or something of someone who works here to you yeah i mean there, there's plenty of security kind of floating around do you think that you could probably try to like lift that badge off their person yeah i would do that yeah awesome. um give me dex and larceny dex and larceny that's six dots not bad is anyone uh, is anybody providing a distraction um, I can. I could try. Okay. Tell me what you're doing to distract. Um, I am going to run <clears throat> maybe about how far away can I get from him? Eh, I mean, decently far. You're all going to be in fairly good shape, I would imagine. I mean, you're, 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 you run around a lot as wolves. Just maybe about 30, 40 feet away from him, like uh, really feign some type of pain. Trying to get <laughs> He's killing full Sanford and Sons. Yeah. I thought you were gonna go like, Jesus doesn't want this. Oh. I'm doing some kind of crazy oh. thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is that? Arrested development to fake a heart attack? Like, go to, like, where you're just like, oh, it's like. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, you know what? I will give you two bonus die to add to that. Cool. Nice. Okay, gang. Here we go. We are rolling uh, 8 to 10. Okay, so I got uh, the two uh, rage dice are 7 and a 1. The other okay. dice are 7, 4, 1, 8, 7, 3. How many successes was that? I got one, two, three, four. Is a four a success? No, a four is a failure, no. right? Yeah, it's six. Uh, four. Four successes. Okay. Yeah, four successes. Uh, with Rain faking a heart attack, you are able to take this 
lanyard, or I guess that's not a lanyard, like one of those little clippy things that, you know, you can pull the little cord and it snaps back uh, mm -hmm. that has a little badge on there. And uh, I mean, it's very, very cutting edge technology. You can like swipe it in the wall and it unlocks stuff. You don't even need a physical key. Super fancy. I mean, the glass walker in you, I'm sure is thrilled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. There is such a, like an internal tension that he's just gotten so used to repressing at this point, he's not even thinking about it. But the idea of just like running through Nashla and like sound and music twirling in the halls <laughs> before like going and looking at different things. He is like, it is taking all of his, all of his resolve, but he's very, very uh, composed right now. Um, so I am going to hold up kind of wordlessly the, the badge that I got to the rest of the team. Oh, okay. Out of character team, what do we feel like is good for next step? So I want to ask, like, as part of our like briefing or whatever, did we get floor plans? Absolutely. Yeah, you would. You would have a pretty good idea of where you need to go from here. Okay. Yeah, that's what we rolled out earlier. Can we say when we were like rolling yeah. out the yeah. paper? That's what we were looking at. Yeah, like there, there's the the map of. Cape Canaveral, and then like three maps below that is like here's the real shit. So I guess where would which, which rule would these spaces be in? Yeah, you you have a pretty good idea of where they would be. So like that part now that you've got oh, access yeah, wouldn't be have. so difficult, especially because now uh, everyone other than. I don't know. Did moonshine change whenever you were at home? I was sweating over this. I, there's a chance that he changed when they were back at his house. But, like, I don't think he thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three well-dressed individuals. And then we have moonshine. Oh. So there's, a, there's a slight slight disconnect here of like one of you may not one of these things is not like the others you know uh you may stand out a little bit in those more secure areas yeah meanwhile uh, like everyone the bow ties and everything that's gonna just look like oh hey we're a bunch of nerds at nasa i feel like everything was so like everything cool now was so counterculture back then <laughs> that I think that like you could pretty much protest anything fun at this and it would be believable <laughs> like, like down with card games there's the devil's play thing like <laughs> yeah pretty accurate uh, um yeah oh man I wish I would have taken Steve's uniform or something um <laughs> What if was is it less more or less conspicuous if I'm just a, a literal dog? <laughs> mm, I'm gonna say more because you don't have like you know a vest to say you're right. a certain animal mm. or anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and I can't steal one of those off a dog. <laughs> Winston, like, that's his one moral yeah. line. Is he... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm glad that he's got that line. That's a. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were kindred. Totally... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody be dead. None of this would be an issue. <laughs> if, um... Let's murder all of NASA. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's and a blame press it on pass. The Guys, I got to watch this. Uh, I got to watch this vampire stream. It's a press <laughs> pass. So, like, Moonshine it could just be from like you know a different kind of publication. Yes, <laughs> love it. Like the precursor to High Times. Yes, oh, I was yeah. just thinking that <laughs> <laughs> the world's first like stoner mag. I'm here for it. Yeah. Oh my god. You know what? I meant to say this, but at Sears, I think Moonshine wanted to steal a pack of um, disposable cameras. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, so, like, I I love yeah. the idea that this is like a zine before zines were cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Amazing. Right. This is the day Live Journal was born, team. <laughs> <laughs> this, is it. this is where it all came from. This is where it all started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great. 
Okay, so we've decided that I'm believable. Ish. Yeah. The, the only issue uh, is the press being in those secure areas, but I think that with that security badge, maybe you know you could be like escorting them. I'm giving somewhere. like a faux tour. I'm like, and this yeah. is this fucking thing over here, which <laughs> is worth looking at. And then here's some <laughs> some other shit. All out, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, He's doing a better yeah, job I, than that. I you know what? Uh, you did roll pretty well on that larceny. Uh, I'm gonna say that because everybody is pretty focused on the launch you're able to grab like a security jacket to throw over mm. your clothes. Mm -hmm. So you just, you got this thing, you know, it's a security on the front and like big letters on the back. Yeah. And I'm giving a nod to people that I can tell work here as if I know them and ignoring the like be uh, confused faces that they make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna act like I belong here, like I've been here yeah. every day. Yeah. He, Winston is like holy. We're mm -hmm. trying not to finger guns anybody because I don't <laughs> think finger guns was a thing, was it? I, you know, I mean, we're talking about a bunch of nerds at NASA. I'm sure finger guns were like a thing. What if it's just like horribly misinterpreted and they take it like an actual threat? <laughs> or, or you know, because like intelligent people tend to be more queer. Uh, this mm. is 1969. Like maybe they're like, this dude's bi as fuck. Give me finger guns walking around. Like, yeah, I, this, I don't know. Like the means of or the secret meaning of finger guns. It's got like yeah. some secret hanky code like implications that I just exactly. Don't That's know what about. I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Like you know, this is still at a time where like it's not okay socially mm. to be gay and out. So like, yeah. Yeah, one dude that just has a drastically different response to, <laughs> to Winston, like by. one of them just like winks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's this is just above his head, so he's gonna like wink back and like keep walking. <laughs> Winston's I... here getting dates and saving Gaia. Mm hmm. <laughs> and he's an just... adorable companion. <laughs> what are you gonna say, uh, Augustine? Nope. Oh no, it was Mel, I think. Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say, like, Moonshine is just watching this happen and like just so fucking impressed. Just like <laughs> watching like all like basically like watching Winston just get checked out mm -hmm. at NASA. And like I can die happy guru. Happy yeah. gay room, sorry. <laughs> it's definitely gay room now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is is Winston out? Like, to Winston to his has close a friends? soon to be ex wife um, that like he does not know about his like lupine tendencies, <laughs> um, and he's been encouraged like not to tell her about it. But to be honest with you, I think that he was probably this is so deep for backstory. For the character. <laughs> it's probably exploring this and his first change. He comes back after the first change, super gay, is how I'm going to write Winston. <laughs> he turns into a werewolf, and then he just likes men on the other side of it. He's, yeah. That's his process. That's what his experience. And now he's just trying to adjust his life accordingly. Yeah. It's it's like like an acid trip, but you murdered people, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He really and like also, unlocks some stuff in his brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, you know what? No, I... I didn't even like her that much anyway. Mm hmm. Yeah. This is a long yeah. time coming. Thank you, Gaia. <laughs> Thanks, Gaia. <laughs> coming out with the help of Gaia. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> so, yeah. I want to. So, Beep Boop is in my watch right uh -huh. now. I want to send Beep Boop into whatever approximation of like a security system is built into the infrastructure here would yeah. it be possible to do that absolutely all right um, so i'm gonna hit eight zero zero eight enter <laughs> and have starts glowing and beep boop and it's just like a very small version of yeah. his like umbra size he's like a a traditional size moth in this but he still has the the anime eyes <laughs> yeah um and i mean it is something that like most people wouldn't be able to see you know, unless he is physically possessing a 
moth in the real world, which, you know, there may be one just flying around. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so go ahead and give me, oh, let's do, let's do Wisdom Occult. Wisdom Occult, and then do I get the four from you sure do. the boop? Okay, you sure so do. It's five, it's eight dice again. Let's hope this does not blow up in my face. <laughs> All right, we're going to roll. Okay, so uh, Rage is six and four, and then we have a four, a five, a seven, a one, a two, a five. So that's the one, two, three, four successes. Okay. So, yeah, Beep Boop is able to get into the security system. And what are you looking for? Uh, I want Beep Boop to, like, send me mental images of anything that it would deem a threat at this point. And I'm sure it's excited just to be in this like network at NASA and there's a bunch of, so like I would have had non-verbally psychically like the conversation, like stay on target. Right. You know, there's a lot of shiny things and you should just (laughs) get this information first and then you can, you know, run wild potentially. But I need you to let me know, like what should we be on the lookout for? Yeah. Uh, I think you get kind of like a, a psychic, feedback of like you know the the stereotypical like computer sounds like the beeping Mm -hmm. noises that you hear in like old sci-fi movies Mm -hmm. uh, that only you can hear you know this is just kind of in your head from beep boop and then you can see that the spirit leaves and goes back into the watch and uh yeah you get these images and there's just like this lab where you can see people are doing something it's a little bit fuzzy Hmm. but it looks like they're maybe doing something with like petri dishes and you can see that there are like little clumps of organic matter Hmm. and you can see that sort of in the corner of the room there are cages that's not ideal um, I think that like Winston's eyes kind of turned the color of beep boop <clears throat> for a moment while they're like having this exchange, <laughs> and then the glow is gonna stop. Oh, geez, guys, I think I may have found the the catalyst for for all of this. The taint that in out of character is a Pentex. Yeah. All right. The the taint that the Pentex company is gonna unleash on Guy. I think I may know the room that it's coming from. I saw a bunch of petri dishes and. Some really effed up cages. Uh, beep boop showed me the way, and like I'm assuming this beep boop like portray the information on how to get there from where we are, like relative to where we're at. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the display on your calculator it kind of gives like an old old school uh, like whenever you had the text based RPGs, but it's like ASCII art of a map. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I love it. Okay, <clears throat> so I am like using that as kind of a way to wayfind the like this <laughs> archaic calculator that's just giving me all this information. <laughs> um, if the team is all right with it, I pause it that we head to the this weird room that Beep Boop showed me. Yeah, yeah, yep. All right, you're able to make your way there pretty easily. I mean, with you and the the security jacket. Even if somebody stops to question, and maybe somebody does, you're just you show them your badge and just keep walking. I mean, they don't mm-hmm. question it at that point, and so you are able to make your way and acquire some spacesuits. Now, the trick is you don't know how to get to Luna. Oh wait, are we going to check out the lab first, or are we just is go that, through the spacesuits? Is that where you want to go? Well, could we presume reasonably that Pentex would be smart enough to have some variation of the thing that they are doing in the lab? If they want to affect the moon with it, it's probably on the space shuttle, I would imagine. It's it's definitely, yeah, like, it's got to be already on the space shuttle. Even if they're still doing something here, like, it's going to be a little while before the next mission. It wouldn't hurt, probably, to disrupt it. But you also know that, like, if they're doing this here, they've already got other labs and other places doing similar things that are going to be going after Gaia. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Oh, and then just as an aside, I'm going to send beep boop into the space suit. I'm going to 8008 just so that we have some like base approximation of like what some of these functions are. I think he's going to have to extrapolate a lot because this is right above what he's normally been in. Um, well, but thankfully, I mean, the, the spacesuits are pretty simplistic. It's mm. just pressurized and it's got, you know, an oxygen tank. There's not a whole lot of like tech to it at mm. this point because like those early space shuttles essentially had the equivalent of like a modern calculator for a computer. Right. <laughs> Mm. Oh man, if we could have got on the thing, I probably could have flown it then. If that's the case, <laughs> <laughs> could have directed it. Winston's um, like, I could have done this better. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, should we? We definitely shouldn't don the space suits like publicly. I imagine so. We should probably find like a place to put on the space suits and then attempt our our, our lunar travel. How do folks feel about that? Yeah. Find yep. like an MV cafeteria or maintenance room. Just <laughs> something that can like comfortably fit room the four closet. of us and then room like closet. just Yeah, there we go. Put on the the space suits and mm-hmm. I'm sure we all all have to help each other to some extent because <laughs> yeah. they're like Probably. so weird and cumbersome. Uh yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, I can't believe we're really gonna go to the boot. <laughs> Before before you all put on these suits, are you going to the lab? If this wasn't a one shot, I would go to the lab. If this was Weird. like a campaign setting, I would definitely I mean, want to cut like, the head of the snake off. Even that well, it's definitely not the head. Hmm. But I mean, even though it is a one shot, like you know that for the world there will be repercussions like for those of you who are more focused on like Gaia than a paycheck uh, the idea that Pentex has these things here that you could smash before you go would would probably be something you'd want to do I'm all for smashing so let's go break things (laughs) <laughs> Augustine is like already booking it toward yeah. <laughs> also Moonshine probably would be I mean the Red Talons are not fans of technology yeah I don't know maybe we should split the party have have some some thieves and some uh, retribution can we go the- could we go smash at the lab while they go get the spacesuits and yeah can, can we find like a rendezvous point yeah Rondez Vuz. Where are we going? <laughs> Rondez Vuz. Um, Which is the point in the map? <clears throat> Where do we all want to I go? Guess what is essential? As far as we know, since we have a layout of the plans, I guess we would meet at whatever the central area is. Or do we want to meet somewhere closer to an exit? So, do we, hold on. I'm curious. Do we have the space boots or not? At this yeah. Point? So, I mean, we, we had kind of established that we can. We can take this back a little bit and if you want to have split the party before mm. and do that we can do that and say that two of you went to get the spacesuits but because they are pretty cumbersome carrying mm. four between two people is going to be a little little tricky okay so then should we just like stash them somewhere before we go to the lab so we can come back and get them because i don't think we want to smash up the lab while wearing the spacesuits yeah, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the like anarchy of that. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of funny. But also the risk of damaging the suit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and the veil. <laughs> it's a sound of air. Uh, I mean, so I think it's pretty reasonable to say that uh, all of you would know Pentex has at least an idea, an inkling of the existence of the supernatural because they know about Gaia. They mm. know to corrupt the spirit of Luna. Like they know that there's more than just humans for That's sure. That's right. Their whole thing is that they don't have plausible deniability, right? Like they're very aware of the damage. Yeah. And like the, the high level, the executives are very much possessed by high level banes that are directly from the worm spirit so like yeah the board of directors they're they're not human anymore either mostly some of them are kindred some of them are guru 
some of them are kindred. Yeah. That's kind of sick. I'm not going to lie. That's, kinda, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> a little bit of, of a slay for a vampire to of, do. That's part of why kindred and guru don't get along is from mm-hmm. the guru standpoint, kindred, number one, they're not living. So they're not part of the natural cycle of things. But number two, they are more on the side of like destruction and chaos, which is everything that the worm embodies. So yeah. <laughs> for them, Kindred are more close to the worm than anything. I was going to say, I've never heard the Camarilla discuss sustainability. I've never <laughs> heard them like... <laughs> Not even once. Not even. <laughs> they all drive Hummers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ugh, horrible. Huh? I know, right? <laughs> Well, I that's think I also... definitely have to go with the party that's going to grab the spacesuit gang, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but it sounds like we should try to get all the. We should stay together. Yeah. Either get the spacesuits and try to hide stash them. Stash them. Yeah, because they're pretty big. So where, I guess where do we stash them? I or mean, do we... the, the hypothetical broom closet you were going to change in, I think, would be a, a potential place to stash them. Great. Would it be good to just leave them where they are and come get them until we actually need them? That's a possibility too. Yeah. Well, the only thing is that's if we're extracting. Okay, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm just like we're gonna make a big mess in the lab. There's no way we're not gonna make a big mess in the lab. So like, if we want to be fleeing to a theft, that seems risky to me. (laughs) Mm, Versus fleeing to like a a getaway stash. Yeah. On the way. Where we can just like get our suits on and. Switch could planes. we do that from the closet or wherever could the path that we take on up to Luna because that would be perfect if we could rush to this closet throw on our suits and then like zip on up there that would be ideal but yeah. what, what are the preconditions what do we need in order to, to set that up well uh, I mean like I said you don't know the path there so it's going to be tricky it is possible it's just going to be a little bit trickier also as I had mentioned previously entering the Umbra from inside of NASA is going to be a lot harder. It's not impossible, but it's going to be a lot harder. Do we switch it up? Augustine, how comfortable would you feel doing what Moonshine was doing earlier when they sacrificed their uh, mental health and well-being to help us (laughs) travel? I think Moonshine is more skilled at it than I am, but I can Mm -hmm. can try. I think Moon, yeah. I think Moonshine is the better person to lead the charge. Yeah. Augustine yeah. is a switch hitter then, perhaps. <laughs> Break the glass in case of Augustine. <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question: Is what if we did um, jump out the window after we caused a big commotion, and then uh... put on the spacesuits, run outside? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, just to get outside of that all that metal. Could we travel in the time between us jumping out and gravity taking us to the <laughs> ground? If we could like jump through essentially like a portal to a gateway with the umbra path to try to get to the moon, that yeah, might absolutely. make things a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, I'm just... it it would it would still be tricky because I mean the right does require some concentration, but you could do it on the run. Okay. And if we, I mean, if we miss, if we're like a little bit off, that's probably not great. <laughs> Jumping out of whatever yeah. story that we're on at this point. I mean, I imagine this is probably the ground floor. Like, why would they, why would they have the spacesuits, you know, on like the tenth story or something? Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I, that that is something I didn't research. Is where do they keep the spacesuits? Okay. Yeah, that would get you on some list probably. So it's probably a good thing he didn't look that. Up. I mean, I'm sure I'm already on one for all the shit that I Google between <laughs> D and World of Darkness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just that... wanted to jump from a window into the moon. Was my yeah. Whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think the moment that I Googled like corpse decomposition with no air <laughs> because somebody put like a dead body in a bag of holding. I think that was like mm. immediate list. Oh, mm-hmm. I was a dead body in a bag of holding. <laughs> it was you all along. It was me the whole time. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think you all have a, a pretty solid plan of like stash the suits, smash the lab, put the suits on, and then run. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's probably going to go perfectly too. Yeah, totally. I totally. don't see any okay, way this could go wrong. 
I am like wondering about the mechanics of firing a revolver on the moon. <laughs> I feel like it would obviously be different, right? Um, right? Yeah, I didn't think about where I'm hiding my rifle in my suit. <laughs> oh, you can put it in my arm if you want to. Okay. I have, like a tattoo with a gun already in here. So. <laughs> okay, so you have my rifle. <laughs> How many guns are in his arm? <laughs> Yeah, right now, uh, all the, I've emptied the other contents. We have the clothes. Um, I gave everything, everything they everybody shoplifted back. And so right now, it is just the guns and the tattoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that means everything's in Gainesville. <laughs> oh shit! God damn it. <laughs> okay, I mean, you all we'll go back after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, but one of my roommates is definitely going to try your blender, and there's nothing I could do about it. Now. <laughs> yeah. I might as well count that blender. Just I'm just gonna I can steal another one. It's fine. Yeah. It's it's being used to make weed brownies right now. Uh-huh. Nice. <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. wait to try that. <laughs> <laughs> so you all make your way to the lab and you can see this is it looks like you probably cannot use your key card. Uh, because you can see that there is some other kind of identification that these people have uh, mm -hmm. that doesn't specifically say Pentex. It has some other kind of name on there. Uh, you can't quite make it out from here, but it is a very like secure, heavy metal door. Mm -hmm. And you see about a dozen people inside. Look like scientists. They're all wearing like hazmat suits. Mm -hmm. Is it locked, the door? Definitely. Okay, so I'm just going to lean casually next to it uh, for a little bit and render that door down. Amazing. So, okay, it's one rage check. Let's do it. Um, what ha I don't do know I just... what's happening, but it seems Just a, it just seems a cool. single D10. Oh, oh, okay, great. Three. Oh, that is a fail. <laughs> sure is. So I started with two and I'm up to three. Is that the idea? Uh, it does not increase. So oh. it actually decreases. Oh. Which is bad because you need rage to do like most things. Uh, if you have zero rage, you cannot shift forms. Cool. Well, that's what happened. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, it's resolve and honor. So that's five okay. dice. Not my rage dice. Here we go. <laughs> but hey, on the plus side, now you only have well, you had three rage before, so now you have two. So you're you're back to two rage. Right? Back to two. Oh my god. Not only are none of these dice above six or above. Oh no. I rolled two ones. So here's the good thing. Uh because you are trying to do something destructive, it is technically a failure. But it's also kind of a success in this case. That's kind of the way that this works. Uh, okay. is when you're trying to do something, like if you're trying to do a social test uh, and you, you've got a, a brutal failure, you're probably going to like hurt someone, whether it's physically or with words. Uh, in this case, you're trying to render this door down uh, gently, but you, you... No, that's not happening. Uh, I am going to say that you're going to have to shift uh, into Glabro, but you rip this door off its hinges, this heavy metal door, rip it clean off. And you see these scientists all like turn and panic. Like you can see through their, their plastic or glass, whatever uh, face plates, the fear on their eyes. Cause they just, see this person holding this sturdy security door that they just ripped off. I'm going to cover, I think because I sh I'm going to cover my face with it <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, Oh no, uh, let me just put this back. And then I'll just like <laughs> try to turn and just make space for everybody to run in. As I, like. How many scientists are in here? A dozen. Okay. Can yeah. and we can turn into Glabro at will, right? You can you can shift into any form whenever you just have to make rage checks. 
I think that I am going to like launch into this room. How long is the transformation? Is it almost instantaneous? Does it take it's a while? It's pretty quick. It's pretty quick. Okay. Uh, I mean, if this were like combat, combat, then it would take you around, uh, depending, especially on which form you're shifting into. I mean, like here, because I assume you're planning on murdering all these people, probably mm -hmm. Kranos is your best form. Okay. What if I use, wait, do I still have that? I, I have a stare down. Would that work on the, a group of people? Probably not. I mean, what what are you trying to do with it? Um, like kind of. Yeah. Are we destroying whole out of character? Are we here to smash the lab or the lab's inhabitants or both? I'm fine with all of them. I carry no I mean, allegiance to these people. I mean, I will. Employees. I will. Storyteller will tell you. Uh, I mean, you all can pretty well guess. If you just smash the lab and leave these people, number one, they will have seen Garu mm. doing some violence. So that is like people who could testify that, hey, there are shapeshifters, you know, who may not have known that already. Number two, smashing their work would not erase the knowledge from their minds of what mm. they did and how they did it. So we got to eat everybody and make them do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got to kill them with murder, it seems like. Uh, <laughs> got to murder these people, Dad. Um, Yeah, I I can't think of any skill here of my... I mean, outside of, like, turning in and, like, attacking. Uh, yeah. I was going to try to do, like, a blissful ignorance to see if I couldn't blend in before they turn so that when they're <laughs> fighting everybody, I could, like, pop out and try to, like, get the jump on them. But I don't think I have enough time for that. Yeah, it, and it, it, probably wouldn't, it probably wouldn't make a difference. It doesn't look like any of these people are armed. So I'm go, this go, is go, not even. No What's that? Go move, go move, no Krino. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I am is probably your best bet here. Yeah. I'm going to go Krino. And then just. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so is that two rage checks? Yep. Uh, what about Moonshine and Winston? Ooh, Damn. sorry. One more power. Ooh, all right. Where are my two? Winston, I think being like a little bit uh, like reserved in this case, I think that like there is some part of him that feels like some kind of subconscious guilt about just breaking things at NASA. <laughs> the idea <laughs> of it is like kind of oh, hurts yeah. his nerd heart but a little you know bit. That so. this is, but you know that this is Pentax. Right, right. So I kind of feel like you would go Glabro, but um, mm. in, uh, sorry. So out once combat has finished, uh, the return to form, the, that process is just we turn it off, or do we yeah. need to roll again? Okay. Yeah. You yeah. Well, I'll go shifting, shifting to human too, Shifting to human or lupus form is free. You want my uh, rage check? Yep. What'd you get? I got a uh, uh, two and a ten. Okay. Uh, so. I got you're, you're eight able to. And a four. Okay. Perfect. I think Moonshine's going to stay <clears throat> in Glabro. As Glabro. 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 Yeah. I need to take forever. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, so I am rolling for the Rage Strike to turn, which is just 1d10, right? Well, if you're going to Kranos, it's 2d10. 2d10? Okay. Uh, eight and three. Okay, so the three of you who are shifting, a, you're able to turn into your full war form, uh, shifting, you know, tearing through your clothes into this massive, ferocious Garu. Oh man, there goes my bow tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll be back to your your normal. Not very exciting clothes. <laughs> I'm going to be in the identical outfit. The one I'm exactly. gonna have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so are you just going in and smashing everything? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 100%. So these scientists are not armed. They were not expecting anyone to attack here. And because you are ferocious Garu, you absolutely rip each and every one of them to ribbons destroy all of the equipment there will be no roles required you can easily overpower them 
one of you could have easily overpowered all of them. Um, Moonshine is just watching. As I've like, got the door back in the this the hinges just to okay. like, <laughs> been like trying to get it exactly like, right. <laughs> yeah, and you can see like there were there was glass, you know, thick glass on the the window. You can assume is like bulletproof probably, and so you can see as like bodies are thrown against it and blood splatters. It, it's you know a scene from a slasher movie, but it's three werewolves and a dozen people. Well, we do, baby. <laughs> and you said there were cages in this room as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. inside are things that vaguely look like animals but they're not natural they are things that were clearly grown in a lab and they're twisted mockeries that like these these were not real animals that were harmed these were things that were made through science. So I feel like one of us has to kill these those things, probably. Yeah. Unfortunately. Augustine's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Augustine is offended, I think, by these things. Yeah. Mm. I mean they're they're unnatural creations that clearly are not. Like, they're not happy to be there. Yeah. Not having a good time. Like, as soon as you all enter, I mean, they're they're making horrible noises at you. Not that you can hear it over the screams and the murder. But you can see the reaction. Uh, and so, Augustine, you're able to put them out of their misery in the most painless way possible. Uh, and now that this is a bloody mess, you all are able to shift back. I assume you shift back. Before you go and put on the spacesuits, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we should run screaming as soon as we shift back, right? We all run like we're like, oh, don't go that way, just like running from it. I think I love it. This the guy in a security yeah. jacket is like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will say when you shift back, although your clothes are there, uh, you are covered in blood like the three of you are just spattered all over in mm. gore and blood this is less than ideal <laughs> it's all over <laughs> i just i say we run and say there was an explosion or something that's my the that's quiet my hot day just... yeah when we all somehow survived and watched our friends and colleagues be exploded yeah. on us rick when is the launch like is it oh it it, it was launching as you were all entering oh okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah it, we're gonna meet them up there pretty much yeah. no i just mean like if when the launch is happening presumably everyone just kind of stops to watch the launch like, exactly within that's, that's kind of how you all were able to get back here so easily is like right. between the heart attack and the launch and everything else yeah, let's not forget the yeah. heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's an important factor. <laughs> Close um, second. Okay. Yeah, so how far are we from our broom closet? Or Not we... horribly. I mean, you're able to move pretty quickly. Like, okay. even you could, we could say that you all stayed in Krynos if you wanted while you're, you're running. You know, all but one of you. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to, but we could say that. Yeah, that's true. I feel yep. safer. <laughs> yeah, so uh, three werewolves and a guy run through NASA. <laughs> Sounds like the, the setup line to the, the worst joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, NASA has cameras. I oh, I got the right of forgetting or for... I, mean, I might be able to fix that after. Realistically, like... In 1969, did they have cameras everywhere, and are they going to have, like, all the hallways monitored and tapes for all that? Like, that that would be a lot. Because they have to keep all that physical media, so probably yeah. not likely. Well, right. we, are, we are good. So we can just yeah. go to the moon now. We could just go. Yes. Yeah. 
to the moon. <laughs> yeah. So you all are able to, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to get these suits on, especially because none of you have done this before. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you can definitely tell whenever you've got everything latched because it pressurizes. Um, and yeah, so you're running out like the front door or you're like going out a window. I'm running out of the front door and I secretly think that I look the best in my space suit. <laughs> it's the tie. It's the tie that does it. want to risk damaging the this, this suit jumping out a window. That's true. It's very true. I, I mean, think Wilson like, wants the, he wants to damage NASA the absolute least. There's some part of him that still holds on to this dream of like normal humanity. He's like young <laughs> enough of a pup to be like, I just want to I can't destroy my future, maybe employers. So well, sweet um, summer child. <laughs> yeah. Uh he's gonna book it out of the front. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh so moonshine. The, the Y'all ready issue, to go to space? The issue here yeah. is uh there are a lot of people mm -hmm. who will see four people disappear in spacesuits. But you can definitely do it. <laughs> who will believe them? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, how many serious. people is it? So, uh, again, there are press mm. because this is the launch. Now, admittedly, the press, they, they're probably packed up. They're, you know, focused on other stuff. So they're, they're not likely to catch that on camera, but there's hundreds, if not thousands of people here. So that is a thing you can do. Uh... It's not the end of the world, I'll tell you that. It's not ideal. <laughs> I mean, there isn't like a dumpster yeah. <laughs> which we could hide behind. Yes, yeah, there are there phone booths we could all fit in. I wish yeah. passage. That was well, so so the thing is whispered passage would do great if you were trying to be quiet. Oh. It's the visual <laughs> of we're trying to be running quiet past to the eyes. Out. We're trying to be quiet to the eyes. Yeah. I mean the, the issue would be running past the security and like all the people seeing these these spacesuits. I I think really the thing you're gonna need to do here is probably cross over from inside. Even though it's not okay. ideal, I think that's gonna be your best bet. Okay, yeah, maybe we like get to the doorway and we're like, oh shit. <laughs> oh fuck, there's all these people out here still. <laughs> just thought they would all go home. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Why are they still here? <laughs> yeah. Right, it's, yeah. It's 9 30 in the morning. Like, it's time to go home. Call it yeah. a day. <laughs> Everybody go get lunch. <laughs> All right. There's a, there's a good Waffle House. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we okay. don't end this at the, that Waffle House, I will riot. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get that uh, right of shadow passage roll. Here we go. Want Moonshine to give us like a magical girl transformation. <laughs> yeah. Werewolves. No. <laughs> Suddenly, like you realize that her her like dedicated clothes is the dress. Mm. Yes, yeah. that's right. Because magical girl, you know. By the power of moonshine. <laughs> What's that wand looking like? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's four successes, uh, no ones, so three sevens and an eight. Okay. So, uh, I have good news and bad news. Good news is you cross over. Bad news is you're going to take three willpower damage. Because the gauntlet is very thick here. Very difficult to cross through. Okay. Can I ask a question about yeah. um, uh, Umbral Traveler? Sorry. I'm like just searching this PDF <laughs> till it's paper thin okay so with web music mm -hmm. um once per scene when the webs are present you may pluck those strands like musical strings and draw the attention of any single pattern spider present 
is that relevant to this game? Like, I know that Beep Boop is a Absolutely. pattern spider, but... <laughs> well, they're, they're not. They're a thinking engine spirit. So, okay. different thing. So, uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to be like, mm, actually. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so here's the thing. When you cross over, uh, you know, we talked about the Umbra and what things would look like on the other side. This is what looks to be an enormous Saturn V rocket. So the ship that you just saw take off is what you see on the other side. Mm. But this is covered in spider webs. And you can see thousands of spiders of all different sizes crawling along it, weaving these webs. So yes, there are a lot of things that are relevant here <laughs> to that particular ability. Um. Okay, great. So we get we get their attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can we talk to them or like? Yeah. So I mean, you you have traveled enough in the Umbra to know spirits don't always communicate with words, but they can sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, they have their their own ways of communicating. Now, Weaver spirits are typically less uh, cooperative with Garu, but it's not impossible oh, to... What if we use Beep Boop as an emissary? It's like our diplomatic... That's exactly <laughs> where I was going with that. That's exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> Winston is going to have a giant smile on his face, and he goes, 8008. <laughs> <laughs> you see Beep Boop well, just kind of rise out of the watch. And because you're in the Umbra, he was already on your arm. Oh, that's right. But, you know, I mean, you still put it in and, like, can better communicate with him that way. Mm -hmm. To him, that's like yeah. an extra, it's like an extra long pet. The getting summoned after he's already out feels like yeah. a, little, a little pet yeah. massage to him. Amazing. So, yeah, uh, Moonshine, you reach out. You see, I mean, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different webs to potentially grab. And you just find a very thick web and it, it makes this rumbling bass note and this massive spider descends like lord of the rings shell up kind of size and it just gets right up in your face and it doesn't say anything but beep boop what are you doing with him I'm going to like have a nonverbal kind of conversation with Beep Boop as I am like petting him. He's like listening uh, intently. He's a very expressive ma. <laughs> um, and then I, after having this conversation, which I basically told him to to serve as an emissary to like use essentially like his spirit clout here to kind of like help us out. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to like instruct Beep Boop to fly over to Moonshine's shoulder and to just get like hopefully a psychic read for what. Uh, she is trying to say or what she's trying to convey so that we yeah. can like leverage moonshine's connection to the spider um i'm hoping this will work it's like sticking a cup up to a, a door is the way <laughs> yeah I'm and you can you can see like you can see that moonshine he is face to face with this spider essentially uh and moonshine goes over and you know kind of knowing like he knows how other spirits work uh, instead of going to Moonshine's shoulder, he just lands a little further up, like between the eight eyes of this spider. And you can see he kind of glows a little bit. And you can see that the spider kind of glows in response. <gasps> it's very much like if you've ever seen uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where they communicate with like music and lights with these mm. aliens. It's kind of like that, where you can hear like these musical tones. And you can see these lights on these two insects. And Beep Boop comes back to the watch and you can see that it, it spells out, have the path. What does it say? Have the path. Have the path? Okay. All right. Beep Boop appears to have had a good conversation with our, our great friend here in Winston's kind of kind of awkwardly nod to the giant cosmic spider that Moonshine <laughs> is talking to. Um, I think we may be good to go, Moonshine. Do you know 
uh, what he means. All Beep Boop said was have the path. Do you, does that give you a green light? Uh, Moonshine, you 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 don't have any special knowledge at this point, uh, but Beep Boop kind of flies back over to you and is just fluttering around in front of your face, and then you see that he starts to fly off. So we I, have I, a guide. Beep Boop's in charge. Uh, Beep Boop's driving the bus. Yes! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> man. man is driving now. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so it takes a while. Uh, at this point, I am going to say, you know, we did mention earlier that being trapped in the Umbra for too long risks taking willpower damage. Uh, so... What I am going to need is, I need you all to give me willpower rolls. Just your willpower. Okay. That's four. four. I'm back down to two willpower. Did the, sorry, the changing into the form before, did that affect willpower? Because I think it's that I'm here spend one willpower per turn or frenzy what oh no you, you all changed back because being in your cranos okay. form yeah it would not be, go well for the spacesuits okay but also yeah the, the willpower because I mean you weren't in it for very long mm -hmm. I've got a 9 a 3 a 7 and a 7 and the two sevens are the rage dice nice uh, oh this is bad <laughs> Oh no! Oh wait, are we rolling rage dice for this? Well, I mean, yeah, oh. you, you will for. I mean, it'll both be rage dice for you, so don't fuck it up. <laughs> no, I got two successes. Okay. <laughs> I got two ones. Are they on your rage dice though? No. Okay. Then it's and all right. right. On my rage dice, I got an eight and a two. <laughs> okay, so was it just one success? Um. Yeah, two ones, a ten, an eight, and a two, so two successes. Okay. Yeah, so uh, hopefully Sean's coming back, because I haven't seen anything. I don't but... think so. No. He said he had no. to run. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. Bummer. Yeah, I did not see that. Um. Anyway, yeah, so all of you are able to resist losing willpower. Uh, it is feeling like it's draining it's not actually mechanically draining any willpower but you're you're feeling the exhaustion of this umbral travel because it does take what feels like several days to you uh but you are able to reach a point where it looks like it just drops off into infinite space and beep boop communicates through the um the watch and tells you essentially that you need to concentrate like now essentially that this is no longer an equivalent of the physical world this is a more mental part of the umbra so this is crossing another barrier so moonshine i need another spirit pass or shadow passage roll please Let's go. You got this moonshine. <laughs> the okay. That's one, two, three, four successes. Do rage dice matter right now? I mean, if you got a fail, then yes, but And one of the fails is on a rage don't no two fails on a rage die. Oh, uh, you got like one and a two or two? No, okay, sorry. So on my rage dice, where I rolled all four, but I only have two rage. So right. I'm just using what, all my dice. What did you get on the rage dice? Um, I have a 10, an 8, and, a, and two sixes. Okay. The 8 and the 6 are on rage dice. 6 is actually a success. Yes. Okay, so I have a 3 and a 5 on rage dice. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's fine. It's only okay. the 1s and 2s that matter on rage dice. Oh, okay. So you are good. Uh, yeah, you are able to cross. It feels like this is another form of gauntlet going from like the physical to the more mental metaphysical 
realm and you no longer have what looks like ground beneath you. You are now floating through uh, what appears to be like abstract thought and ideas. Uh, you see like clouds of emotion and after a significant period of time, you do reach Luna. You see this enormous ball of glowing energy. And inside of it, you see what looks like a wolf. And you know that you have reached the moon. Mm. Wow. Now you have to cross back over. <laughs> wow. I think we have to take this in, right? Yeah. This is like just like a moment of, of shared awe and silence as we yeah. look up at the And she appears to be sleeping. She doesn't seem to be paying any attention to any of you. Should we warn her? Should oh, we yeah. try? Maybe. Does anybody have experience talking to potentially celestial beings? No. Uh, the one Hail Mary that I can think of for trying to give give uh, Mr. or Mrs. like Moonwolf a, <laughs> uh, uh, a message or a heads up is to attempt to send Beep Boop <laughs> up there <laughs> just to like warn her to see if Beep Boop can warn her of like Impending danger. And he's not expecting this to work, but he, he's going to do this. Uh, asking Beep Boop, do you just get a response? No way. <sighs> Too scary. Um, not doing it. Okay. <laughs> I like to think he has a little scared anime eyes now. <laughs> no, I'm just going to pet it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, it's okay, buddy. Yeah, this is like like if you were going to meet like the celebrity you most admired mm. in the world and like you had to go talk to them and initiate that and you're not like at a con where they're expecting it you just like see them on the street or something <laughs> yeah Sorry. beep boop is not an extrovert that's for sure yeah okay so this is like uh, meeting Beyonce if Beyonce was a god. <laughs> this is. So it's like meeting Beyonce. It's meeting yes. Beyonce. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's just call it what it is. Yes. <laughs> good point. Good point. Okay. So um, I will. I'm not going to press beep boop. I'm going to give him a pet. Like you know, I'm going to let him know. I understand. I'm not going to force him to do anything that he doesn't want to do. And I give uh, Beep Boop a little affirmation, a little thanks for all the hard work that he's been doing on this on this journey. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get a roll to cross over. Yeah, here we go. And again, I get one, le the yeah. difficulty is one less. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Ooh, baby. That is uh, that is one, one on a rage die. Okay. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven successes. That is fantastic. So on the plus side, uh, because you all get your powers from Gaia, you know, yes, but also from Luna, uh, that is a lot of like where the, the shape shifting comes from. Mm. It was going to be easier anyway. But yeah, you are able to come out at Tranquility Base, which is where Eagle One landed, which is where you see that our astronauts are descending the ladder. <gasps> oh, boy. We made it to the moon, y'all! <clears throat> I think Winston is like silently crying. He's like looking at the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> from above and it's just like <laughs> weeping in tears of just sheer like wonder this is like so beyond like we didn't have i don't think that that much like photography even right of the the earth leading up until this point i don't know if we did i mean not, we we had some because before apollo 11 there were other uh i think not 
10 or maybe 10 was the one mm -hmm. uh where they actually orbited the moon but that was just kind of they call it the dress rehearsal um right okay. so they, they had images but yeah this was like the first from the surface of the moon and so being in these spacesuits you do have very limited electronics just communications essentially and so you can hear Buzz Aldrin as he's descending describing this and you can hear this is one small step for man one giant leap for mankind meanwhile Gary we've already been here before so oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> you're like whatever this is fine we we were here first <laughs> three of us just suddenly appearing is not going to help with the moon landing conspiracy theories just <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah oh we are going to regret this like <laughs> having done this like 50 years 60 years from now <laughs> What have we wrought? So um, the nice thing here is that there are cameras, yes, but they're mostly focused on like the ladder and things like that. And, you know, they're going to have cameras that they have with them that they can record things with and on like the lunar rover, but they wouldn't have cameras necessarily pointed at where you are. Mm -hmm. So you are in kind of a, essentially a blind spot. But it, the, they definitely 100% have a camera pointed right at the ladder. So, going to have to do some forgetful record, you know, that kind okay, of thing. Okay, I can, I can do that. I yeah. was going to say, can we send Beep Boop into the shuttle, into Ooh. the spaceship to see and try to get an analysis on if Pintex did anything to the actual vessel itself? Um, just any feedback. And again, I have a conversation like, I know there's a lot of exciting things. You're going to want to do a lot of stuff in need you to like, you know, do the basics. And then within reason, if on the way back, there's something cool that you want to see, that's fine. But we, the, the priority is to get in, get the intel we need and get out. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. just flutters off towards the, the lander and you can hear, like, normally he doesn't really make a lot of sounds, but it seems like maybe you've kind of unlocked a new part of him because he's so excited mm. about all of this technology and so you can hear like these uh electronic almost musical tones as he's just like in there and you you get like brief flashes of the inside of the the lunar lander in your mm. head and yeah it, it's like he's humming to himself basically a little song that it just comes to you like the rest of them can't hear it but you can you can hear mm. his little his little nerd song as he's just freaking <laughs> out <laughs> He's singing right now, team. I like to think that he is sending back images of things he thinks Winston, or he knows that Winston would think are cool. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, hey, look at this, look yeah. at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you do get, like, a flash of what looks like some of the stuff that they were doing in that lab. The, it looks like maybe it was part of the, uh, the rover you know, that they mm -hmm. take out, uh, and it was something that essentially they were going to use the tools that the astronauts are using to measure and like take samples in order to leave this corruption in a very subtle way mm. that even the astronauts wouldn't know that they were taking part in. <gasps> so we don't have to kill Buzz Aldrin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> It is crazy how much, like, just, and it, I don't even call it the veil in my subconscious. Like, the, the, like, I've been beaten into submission with the masquerade that there is, like, <laughs> a real, like, uh, like, levity to the idea of exposing uh, yeah. ourselves to kind. Oh. It, also, it also helps a lot that this is 1969. So, like, yes, there there's risks still, uh, but, like, next friday we're doing a, a werewolf wild west game yeah, i mean mm. like people can talk they could like try to take a picture but i mean how good is that picture gonna be you know if a werewolf's charging at you you got this, this old timey camera that's the origin <laughs> of bigfoot exactly <laughs> speaking of origin you know i'm gonna save it i have an idea for something i'm gonna do towards the, the conclusion of this it's really good um, amazing so I am going to, through the helmet, convey the information that I saw from Beep Boop to the rest of the team. Team, it appears, it, it looks like they have 
uh, and maybe tinkered with some of the tools. It's it's genius, really, the way that he sounds like legitimately impressed. The way that they, <laughs> they have this set up and the way that they, how subtle the implementation was is sincerely impressed. And he realizes he's fawning and stuff. Uh, so we should probably deal with that. I think if we can get to those tools and, and, and kind of get all of this out before they start collecting samples and all that, I think we might be good. Um, hmm, out of character, I'm like, could I like xylophone feet sneak <laughs> on over to the, cause I'm like, I can turn invisible if I'm standing still. So we could really squid games this, hopefully, <laughs> to where we're just sneaking. And then if they turn around, I could just stop. And then hopefully just hold the, you know. Um, that is the only plan my brain can think of now. But I am open to suggestions and other ideas. So this is this is very much uh, like me metagaming. So fun fact, uh, part of the footage of like them being on the moon actually in real life went missing mm. so i think we just explained it, where that happened it sure <laughs> did yeah because should i do the right of whatever to forgetful record yeah, yeah. right a forgetful record for this period of time through which we we need to stealth and like take care of this pintech stuff on the on the actual ship yeah so typically the way it works is it's like an after the fact kind of thing. I'm going to say that in this case, I will allow, uh, I am going to have you give me a, uh, what was it? Wisdom occult roll just to see how well this works. Okay. That's going to be four. And you know what? Go ahead and add your your beep boot dice. Uh, he'll give you some assistance on that. Ah, nice. That'll be eight. <laughs> okay, so we have got a four and a five on the rage dice. We've got a ten, uh, a seven. Are the two success? I got two successes. Okay, so. I think that uh, kind of explains some of the, the conspiracy theories about the moon landing, <laughs> because as you know, you're kind of trying to magically essentially tinker with this. Uh, it does erase a section of the footage. Um, essentially like it's like, okay, you've got this amount of time. Uh, so you've got like five minutes, we'll say. And so, that portion is going to be wiped. Uh, and then it, it seems to like mess with the way the, the images look. And so, you know, people are going to look at it later and be like, what's going on with the lighting here? The shadows are funky. Yeah, no, that was Winston. That was Winston. You did it. <laughs> I did. I don't know how proud of it I am. In the New conspiracy <laughs> theory unlock. Werewolves on the moon. <laughs> werewolves on the moon i'm wondering let me think um how many astronauts are out of the ship right now two two and would stare down work on the moon <gasps> yeah. that's, that's what like... i'm thinking about doing is like just staring them down and scaring them and then having <laughs> augustine and moonshine go in and and beep boop go in to like handle I will say, like, you can see they are not looking at the ship at all. Oh. They are I guess you much... would be preoccupied. I imagine your attention may, may be yeah. elsewhere in yeah. this case. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody watched the, the YouTube video that I sent earlier, but, like, literally there's a, a time where one of the astronauts, I don't know which one, sings, like, a, a song where he's, like, hmm. hippity hoppity, whatever, like, as he's, like, jumping because the gravity is lower on the moon. Like, they're just uh. having a ball. They're having a great time. Being not real thinking. American. It's our first time up here. You're embarrassing us. Come on. Exactly. Let's exactly. It's <laughs> amazing. This yeah. is why you can't take Americans anywhere. You know? I do love the idea that like three other astronauts that didn't come on the spaceship 
are you also on the moon right now? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like two of us, I imagine, are bleeding through. I do. We didn't shower before putting on the spaceship, so they have no, probably absorb up. some of the gore. Oh, yeah, they're they're, they're yeah. so well sealed. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're not like inside. leaking blood out. <laughs> good, the good, good. Or they I just don't want mine to be pink. That's the whole reason why I've decided. <laughs> you know what? For that reason, I'll allow it. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um <laughs> so what do we think of that plan, folks? I will stare down Buzz Aldrin and his other asshole while the two of you go inside. Whatever that guy's name was. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Who history is so kindly remembered. I feel like such an asshole for not knowing his name. <laughs> It's okay. I I definitely did some research on this, and now I'm like, I don't remember who the hell it was either. <laughs> but this absolute patriot, this absolute king. Wait, is it Neil Armstrong? No, it wasn't mm-hmm. Neil Armstrong. Hold on, I'm looking. Anyway, continue, continue while I'm sorry pulling that up. Yeah, I think you might be right. Um, yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, I try to. I, I'll use the stare down, and then the two of you need to go in. Um, could beep boop highlight to them where Pentex has done has made these alterations or I want beep boop to like hopefully like land and show them what they need to like be taken care of. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. He's more than happy to do that. And like the two of you can't hear it, but like Winston can hear that he's like communicating. He's like telling you all these, like he's just rambling off what all of this stuff is and what it does. Mm. I like the speak to spell voice. I'd like to think, even though this is probably before that in my head. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, wow, wow, wow. (laughs) Uh, Great. Um, Do I need to make a check to intimidate and stare down? Um, It says one rage check. Yeah, give me the rage check and we'll see how that goes, but uh, no, because these are humans, it's it's really not going to take a whole lot. Uh, and they're on the moon. They're going to, like, they're going to flip the freak out. <laughs> Traumatizing astronauts. Um, let me see. Okay, so the, the rage check is just 1d10, right? Yep. Five. Uh, you do lose a point of rage. Then... Oh no, did I drop for a second? I think so. My bad. Yeah, okay. Happens. Appear to be back. Apologies. Yeah. Uh, um, you, do, you lose a point of rage because that it was a fail, but that's okay. okay. You still have a point. Go down a little bit in rage. Oh yeah, no, it, it was uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. They were the ones in the lunar module. So we, we knew, we knew, we knew both of those assholes. <laughs> you knew those guys. <laughs> okay, I'm going down in rage. Yeah, so I am going to, can, I want to shift a little so bad, but I, oh, I you fear absolutely can. Like, that it would Labro? rip the suit. Yeah, yeah, I just want to go up yeah. one. I'm just trying to turn the temp up a little bit. Oh, yeah, um, like, it, it, it wouldn't do enough, like, it might get a little bit tighter. Mm. Uh, you might be like, oh, shit, maybe my claws, they're not, like, full-on claws at this point, but it's like your nails get sharper. Uh mm. And you're like, oh shit, it might rip through, but you're you're good. You know, I feel like I'm fine is now that I've like reflected on it and really sat with the facts surrounding it. I feel like I'm okay being a human on the Bermuda <laughs> in my homage form upon reflection. Um <laughs> also I think like I don't need my claws to stare them, scare them if I'm doing the eyes of the the whatever, right? Right. But I mean like if you if you're shifting to Glabro, you know, it would still kind of give you that a little bit of claw that way you know it gives that claw damage but right really mechanically here it's not doing it they can't see yeah. your claws and they shouldn't see your claws you gotta keep yeah. that sealed up yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but still like shifting especially the face you know gives them a little bit more of that fear and yeah probably a little bit of 
uh, almost like Kindred whenever they get those glowing red eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get kind of similar effects here. One of those crossover abilities that both have in their own way. They've uh, got their own little flavor, yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing is, is like when these two astronauts piss themselves, they're already hooked up to like equipment and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part a really of good point. Because I am like a stranger in a human like astronaut suit, space pink, like space suit, <laughs> who they very much know was not one of the passengers on the the very the hyper specific vessel that they came up with that there were exactly um, two people on, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to approach them with like this kind of wild eyed fury, like the, the <laughs> eyes of a crazy. Have you ever seen those like videos that were going popular during the pandemic of like the crazy Karens that were just acting a <laughs> fool? He's got like that unhinged look in his eyes as he's like absolutely leaping towards uh, Aldrin and Armstrong and trying to like oh my God. terrorize now, them in a way they will never forget. Now I really wish that you had taken Hare's Leap. For your native mm. gift. Um, it but it's like, the moon. But I mean, with that, then you're just like insanely <laughs> leaping. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh shit, I might not come back. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm falling again. There's something very <laughs> scary about something coming at you at like a very moderate pace. That's in like space. Terrifying. In space, space yeah. Where there shouldn't be anyone else. <laughs> yeah. And where famously, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> right, time to test that theory. Thank you. Lunge at these you all people. have those communications devices. <laughs> right, that's true. So I assume that they've already, like, I've already sent beep boop in with them, and have gone through before I like decided to go ham on Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. I'm gonna like press a button, and uh, <laughs> the, that all right, I'm gonna take care of these two guys. You two should definitely go into the damn it, and it was. Um, it was Mr. Bo who we tragically had to leave in the Umbra mm. momentarily. Who had the cameras? I was oh, gonna say. You should oh snap no, he's pictures. he's no, he's definitely on. He's definitely on the moon with you. He's just uh, okay. Perfect. He's just you um, know the lookout again. Got it. <laughs> yes, he's he's so good at it that we can't see him right now. <laughs> yeah, he did that. Th he did that thing where he just melted right into the scenery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He has that thing too. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna let. Uh, Augustine and Moonshine know that, and then I'm going to lunge at them. Yeah. Uh, Great. So, I mean, they, they absolutely, I mean, there's not a whole lot of places for them to go, uh, but they, they turn and run, you know, as best they can, just doing the little like lunar hop away. Uh, mm -hmm. You're much faster than they are. So, you know, you could catch them if you wanted to, but, you know, where's the fun in that? Like, it's about the fear sending a yeah. message right so yeah Ooh, can i get in their headsets absolutely <laughs> switch over the channel <gasps> am i like capable of roaring can i like give a war or howl. a howl in hamid you could howl yeah i'm gonna like howl so fucking loud into the headsets of buzz aldrin and neil armstrong like ooh, deafening ooh. i'm gonna summon it from my chest howl. hear me out Hear me out, uh, you know, because I'm I'm assuming they have a way to you know switch channels like other walkies and stuff do. Uh, what if on this other channel with your party, you're like, hey, let's uh, let's do a howl. Let's oh, all yeah. do it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was so thinking like, about. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. You start it, and then everyone else kind of echoes in, you know, like wolves do. I'm gonna switch back and be like, hey, uh, turn to to. To channel 42069. <laughs> that is naturally the channel that the astronauts use. <laughs> Listen, I've read about NASA in the 60s. I do not doubt it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a wild place. Um, oh, yeah. We've got to how we really got to put the, the fear of Luna in these <laughs> MFers. Yeah. This is for you, Luna. For you. <laughs> and the four of you, you know, because Raina is still there, all start this howl, and you hear a fifth howl. Yes! Nice. And so, the two of you who are going into the lander are able to acquire, because uh, I assume you're going to want to take this back with you, and not just, like, trash it here. Winston's like, probably. please, yes, please, please bring this back <laughs> with you. Please don't break it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Because you you never know with things like that what might happen if you just break it and leave it there. Uh, People will be so mad at me (laughs) if we break it. (laughs) So you're able to acquire these corrupted things uh, and make your way back. And realistically, at this point, Beep Boop knew how to get you here and is able to get you back. I'm not going to make you all roll because we went a little bit longer than uh, planned on going. But... You all have successfully prevented the corruption this time of Luna. There are several more missions to the moon, so, you know, it's possible that future missions may not go so well. But this time, you have prevented the corruption of the moon spirit. So, congratulations. Let's go to fucking Waffle House. Can we all be at Waffle House in our spacesuits? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just like take off our helmets. <laughs> the waiter is just like, six suits. Did you make those yourselves? I was going to say, yeah. And like bring us all the meat yeah. you have in this yeah. establishment. <laughs> It's been a day. I also <laughs> want to, um, at some point, I don't know if it'll happen now or in the future, I want to, to part ways, like, in a heartbreaking way with Beep Boop, who needs to go on and, and live live their own life. And Beep Boop, for whatever reason, is is drawn to Point Pleasant in, in West Virginia, <laughs> for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, sure. And that's the last that I heard of him is he went to, to Point Pleasant. <laughs> I haven't heard about him since. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I mean, it's especially weird because, like, the whole Mothman thing happened in 66. So Beep Boop mm. just, like, hangs out with Mothman. Oh, yeah. 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 He's, like, Good learning time. with Moth. I get the occasional, like, flash from Beep Boop. <laughs> He's not able to send a lot of stuff super long distance, but I like to yeah. think he can use the Umbra. Beep Boop comes to, for the occasional visit and, you know, lets me know how Mothman is doing, all that good stuff. Yeah, you get the occasional, like, mental postcard. Mm-hmm. Big that. It's, def- <laughs> it's definitely, like, scenery, and it's got little text on there like it's a postcard. Oh, yeah. It's just, like, uh, stills of horrified West Virginians running away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just, like, Mothman's amazing ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mothman is, so like, juicy. with juicy's cannon. <laughs> Oh, what an experience this was so much fun what a great like yeah. introduction to to werewolf yeah well, thank you i'm glad you all enjoyed it I, I apologize it went a little bit longer than i would have thought but because we went to sears <laughs> yeah we went to god for <laughs> no reason we <laughs> went to sears for no reason <laughs> and the moon <laughs> yeah. and the moon <laughs> Uh, Honestly, it was easier getting to and from the moon than Sears. I feel like, for real. (laughs) Getting into that Sears was more of a cosmic ordeal. (laughs) Yeah. Truth. Truth. Uh, Well, does anybody have anything that they want to plug before we head out? Oh, man. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My name is Ethereus Bordeaux. You can find me around the internet at Vampire Himbo on Instagram and threads. Then on Twitter. TikTok and Twitch. It is late. Uh, you can find me at vampire underscore himbo. You can also catch me on Philly by Night if you like the the world of darkness. And this is your brand of strawberry jam. I play a minister posing as a Toreador over there. It's a really really fun story. So go check that out. Amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, I mean, this is my channel, so I, I think most people know me. But uh, I will say tomorrow we are playing Vampire the Masquerade with a different crew uh, who are also mostly newbies to it. So come check that out as they are going to be meeting Lilith, who I'm breaking a little bit from uh, official vampire canon. And uh, it's not Kane who was the first vampire. It's Lilith. Because in in the lore, she does uh, teach him the disciplines whenever he becomes the first vampire. So to me, it makes sense that she's actually the real first vampire. Uh, I do want to say then... praise our savior set. I feel like I have to balance out the messaging <laughs> in the here that you know, also it's, praise sets light. It's funny you say that because uh, I I got to make what's hopefully going to be my real first kindred, uh, and they are a setite. So mm. I'm super excited about that. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. We can definitely talk minister. I did a whole <laughs> podcast, character without stories, plug star. 
um about building a minister posing as a toreador and what it was like to play but like so much of that was establishing what what is the inner workings of a minister what does it look like How, what is said i think Absolutely. and believe and they believe some wild shit so yeah let me know i love to talk about it yeah and speaking of star uh because one of the things that i do is i'm a writer for even footing games and i write ttrpg stuff uh we're actually doing an ad swap over on even footing games with mel uh because Ooh. we are doing a kickstarter our very first kickstarter uh Ooh. so go check that out uh the link has been in the chat and it'll be in the description whenever i post this uh but yeah we we just finished writing babies and broadswords bathfinder the adorable wholesome pirate game that we wrote and it's it's great uh so go check that out that's awesome. awesome yeah that's all i got but thank you all it's been a blast and, yeah uh, we'll Carry your you sales. big old heart yeah it was so fun playing with you guys mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot of fun <laughs>